Hello, good evening and welcome to the Joy News National Dialogue. Very, very important discussion for us to have tonight. And remember that we're looking at the free SHS promise. We're looking at what was promised and what actually has been done and to look for the solutions to the challenges confronting the policy. Now, remember that in 2017, upon the assumption of power, the new patriotic party government led by President Nanado Danko Ekofuado, decided to make good the major promise to Ghanaians, making education at the senior high school level free for all, irrespective of your background. Now, the promise was one of the president's, uh, one the president had envisioned since his first bid to be president in 28, 2008. Now, many were those who proposed a deeper consultation with various stakeholders before the implementation starts, because to them, there are a lot of, to the policy areas that needed to be fashioned out properly. Well, it's been almost eight years since the implementation, and we've all seen the challenges bedeviling the policy. One of the major challenges is the food shortages at the various senior high schools, resulting in some schools serving what many have described as undernourished food to students. Now, in some cases, there is little uh, for the kid to share. Many parents say they are compelled to supplement the food served the awards at the various in high schools with monetary contributions as a result of the acute shortage of food. This was contained in our latest hotline documentary, Empty Plate, the free SHS promise, which highlights the grim picture of quantity and quality of food that has served thousands of students on various campuses. Uh, it is the reason we have gathered around this table tonight to deliberate on the challenges confronting a rather good policy and most importantly, to find the solutions to, uh, that will make us derive the full benefit of making SHS free. Now, so we have assembled some of the best brains in the country to help us together with you at home, help the government on what is really needed to make the free SHS policy worthwhile. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Joy News National Dialogue on the Free SHS Promise we title Empty Plates, the Free SHS Promise. Now uh, for the next three hours let's find the solutions together. Welcome. Now let's begin with getting into where we started from to where we are today. Now this is it, the Empty Plate, the Free SHS Promise. So what's what contained in this one? Remember that I told you earlier that it was a promise that the president, Nanado Danko Ekufuado, envisioned since he tried to become president in 2008. Now, in the 2016 manifesto, they said the MPP will redefine basic education to include senior high school uh, covering vocational, agricultural, and technical uh, schools and make it available for free on a universal basis to all Ghanaians. So wherever you're coming from, you had that, that uh, you know, chance to then enroll. Now let's look at the free SHS yearly enrollment since the policy was implemented. Before it was implemented in 2016, we had some 308,799 students being enrolled into the senior high school on a yearly basis. The year the free education was implemented in 2017, we had an enrollment value of 362,775. So it was an upward increment on the 2016 figure by a 17%. In 2018, which is the second year of the policy, it increased by 19% to some 432,954. In 2019, 2020, however, it dropped by a six percentage uh, point to 404,851. In 2020-2021, there was a 5% increment over the 2020 uh, uh, figure um, to some 425,000. In 2020-2021, there was a 10% increment to 463,000. And then in 2022-2023, there was a decrease of 3%. So uh, this is how it's looking like. Now, if you look at the total number of students enrolled on this uh, uh, policy, I mean, since the free SHS was implemented, it's 2.8 million students so far uh, that have been enrolled. Let's look at the average annu annual enrollment. So in a yearly basis, what it is like. We've, we've, what we've done is to look at six years before the policy was implemented and six years after. Six years before, the yearly enrollment was some 260,490. Now, since this policy was implemented, on, on the average in a year, some 422,000 students are enrolled into senior high schools. 
Now, so let's look at the, you know, uh, total enrollment figures. Now, in 2016, before the, uh, I mean, policy was implemented, if you look at the, the whole senior high school system throughout Ghana, we had 851,312 students in Ghana, I mean, per statistics, in, in the senior high school. Since it was implemented as of today, we have some 1.308 million students in school. I mean, this, this figure is a 2002 figure, and the, our source is EduWatch. Now, let's move in and talk about budgetary allocation. How much, how much have we budgeted to spend on free education since it was implemented from 2017 to 2024? We've budgeted, uh, hoping, 15.65 billion Ghana cities to spend on free SHS. But how much have we really, you know, spent? Um, let's look at it here now. So we've budgeted some 15 point something billion uh, uh, cities, but how much have we spent? In 2017, we budgeted to spend 400, but we ended up spending 418 million. So there was an over each there. In 2018, there was a 1.137 billion uh, budgeted uh, uh, figure, but we spent some 1.130 uh, 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 billion. That, is, that was about 90% uh, of the figure. Now, in 2019, we budgeted to spend some 168, uh, 80, 1.682 billion you know, on free S uh, SHS, but we ended up spending 1.28 billion. Now, just watch how you know, the trend, how the gap is widening up. I'll tell you what is happening here. Now, in 2020, we budgeted some 2.429 billion, but we, we ended up spending some 1.400 billion. And I said, just look at it, I'll tell you what's happening. Now, in uh, 2021, we, we decided, we budgeted some 1.974 billion, but we ended up spending 1.010 billion. Now, what you've seen, let me then, let me then uh, share with you the percentages, I mean, per the allocations and, and their expenditure. In 2017, you saw that we spent more than we had decided, to, we, we, we budgeted for. So there was a 120% uh, expenditure, so 20% above the 100% that we decided to spend. Now, in 2019, we, 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 we spent 99% of the uh, figure we, uh, we budgeted. Now, in 2019, 2020, then it further reduced. From the amount we, we budgeted or we allocated, we only spent 76%. In 2020, 2021, from the amount that was allocated for, to free education, that's free SHS, we spent 58% of it. Look at it. In 2021, 2022, we spent 51% of the amount that was allocated. What's happening here? Now, we all knew that people started complaining about no food. When they even take supplies, no payment. So what could best explain the gap that monies were not being pushed into free senior high school. Now, let, let's look at it. We're looking at the uh, double track that was introduced to check, you know, the enrollment and the fact that we're being faced with, uh, uh, you know, infrastructure challenges. So the double track system was introduced in some 400 schools to tackle the issue of increased en student enrollment and the lack of uh, infrastructure in many preferred senior high schools across the nation. So we brought in uh, this to solve some, uh, you know, the, the challenge we have, but it had some goals. One was to create room to accommodate their increase in enrollment, and two, to reduce class sizes. Did we get that? Three, it was to increase contact hours with teachers, and four, increase the number of holidays, especially for teachers. But is that what we saw? We'll get them here today. Now, we're also looking at the cost of prospectors. We all know how parents have been complaining about this. In 2017, 2018, we, we knew that, I mean, we're looking at the challenges confronting, and that's why we, look, we looked at how, you know, the infrastructure is also impeding this. Now, the cost of prospectors is a challenge because parents have been complaining about it. 2017, 2018, the cost of prospectors to, I mean, how much you will spend on your child was 1,373. But as you can see on the screen, it kept increasing, and in 2022, 2023, you would have to spend some 2,000 477. So it has increased by how much? 80.4% in six years. That's how, you know, it has been. So, you know, and, and, and the source of, of, of the information we're using is, you know, the Africa Education Watch. This 
is an empty plate for you, the free uh, SHS promise. So we've tried to break it down from where we have come from and where we are today. And we all, we've all seen that we have challenges. Now, I've shared with you two challenges. I'm going to share with you the third challenge, which is, uh, you know, what, the work that we did, which we've christened empty plate. So watch this as our third challenge. Today, we take an important step on that journey. From today onwards, no child will ever be denied senior high school education simply because his or her family is unable to afford it. The Free Senior High School Policy, an important initiative of the Akufuadu administration, stands as a monumental welfare program significantly eradicating financial barriers to secondary education in Ghana and opening new doors for countless children. To ensure that no child is denied access to secondary education, we are removing one of the biggest obstacles that currently stand in their way, cost. The cost of providing free secondary school education will be cheaper than the cost of the alternative of an uneducated and unskilled workforce that has the capacity to retard our development. However, the implementation of this groundbreaking policy faced formidable challenges. Public opinion was sharply divided. Should the free SHS target only the financially disadvantaged, or should its rollout have awaited the necessary infrastructure for effective implementation? These debates intensified when Finance Minister Ken Oferiata in 2017 proposed the exclusion of financially capable families from the program. Despite these challenges, the policy has not only endured but also thrived. If the succession is anything to go by, then Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia places it succinctly under this cliché. So far, so good. The Free SHS has seen the enrollment of hundreds of thousands of people, boys and girls, who would otherwise not have been able to attain senior high school education. This claim is right to some extent. This is because the policy, according to the government, has produced the best WASI result in the last eight years. Aside from this, it has achieved the very goal the Akufuadu administration set out for itself when they proposed the policy. According to the Ministry of Education, the 2017-2018 academic year saw the highest enrollment in the country's history, with 470,000 students gaining access to secondary education. Since the program was rolled out in 2017, over 2.5 million students have benefited from the program. This 2023-2024 academic year recorded the highest enrollment yet, with 500,000 students placed under the program. And in 2019, I wrote my BEC and I passed. I was admitted in Maoli School, which was last year. I want to thank the government. I know it's not only me that is going through this and because of the free SHS, I've come back to school. I Libra. I three. Bakuko school Makuse. Bakuko school Akru. Bakuko Ajina. Sesianu, sa almost me to ask Visa. Minya. Wow, say, Nipa Bakuye, thousand Ghana, formally. Say, I was me to meet you as I can meet me at Acha, a Koranian other country. Lebranusu, yes, Ganu Dosu, Terrication, a FI Papa. It is without doubt that the free SHS policy has made it possible for children who parents could not have afforded secondary education to have the opportunity to continue their education. But a key component of the policy that cannot be overlooked in ensuring that children enjoy the implementation of the program is feeding. A grim reality that many are hesitant to speak about. Don't give you bread, don't give you budget. And you have to do the bread. Sometimes you give budget and shit. 
the sugar. They won't give you the flour. Sometimes they'll give you curry, they don't give you beans. They'll give you beans, they don't give you the curry. So you want to wonder how are you going to combine? They'll give you three tomatoes, they will not give you. You'll get mackerel, you will not get three tomatoes. You'll get It is for this reason I go undercover in the country's senior high schools in the West Indian, Greater Accra, Northern, Oti, and Central regions to investigate the irregular supply of food items by the government and the dire consequences faced by thousands of students. My name is Kwiti Nati. All right, so uh, we're still here on the uh, Joy News National Dialogue. The free SHS promise, and as you watch the, uh, a bit of the things that we've done uh, so far. Let's share with you or introduce to you the, some of the guests that I'm going to be doing this with, and then uh, we'll get into the issues. Now, first on the list, and, and starting from my far left, yes, uh, we have Dr. Um, uh, Clement Apark. He's deputy ranking on the Education Committee of Parliament, and he is so versed when it comes to education, Doc. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we also have uh, Ambrose Kwajoja. He is national president That's of uh, chairman. Uh, That's national chairman yes. of uh, Teo. Uh, thanks for joining us here. Uh, we also have here uh, Harriet Norma, senior programs officer, Send Ghana. Uh, she's also joining us to share thought on this. Now we also have you know someone that you've been listening to a lot when it comes to education. Uh, uh, discussions in Ghana. Kofi Asari, he's Executive Secretary of the Africa Education Watch. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we also have Dr. Hilda Mantebia Boy, President of Pediatric Society of Ghana. And then we also have uh, Kwesi Kwating Piaro of the Education Ministry. Well, so uh, they, together with a lot of people who've assembled, who will be joining us on Zoom and also on phone, uh, will be sharing our thought on this free education promise analyzing and finding solutions to the challenges that uh, uh, you know are bedeviling this so uh, uh, we, we will uh, be, be introducing to you a lot of our guests as well at this juncture we'll take a short break but remember this is also live on radio on joy 99.7 fm and also on social media so join us wherever you are with your thought and we will share with you okay so um let's try and introduce some of our guests who are joining us on zoom as well uh and i'll be sharing with you much more because look the list is long now we know that primus barrow is national secretary of chas they are very very important to this discussion and he's joining us on zoom grateful to you sir for joining us um, and I, as i told you we've assembled a lot more people to help us in finding solutions and we are interested in the solutions to the challenges that uh, we are encountering now we'll take a quick break when we come back we'll start the main show the discussion for you to understand what's really happening stay with us here All right, so welcome back uh, to the Joy News National Dialogue, the free SHS uh, promise. This is live on Joy News, live on Joy FM, 99.7 FM, and on all our social media handles as well, as well as live around the world on myjoyonline.com. Well, let's start with, you know, the, the, the general overview of this SHS policy and what our guests, because everybody here really has a lot of understanding in what we're, we're dealing with. So let me start with you to take your general overview of the free SHS policy, where we've started from and where we are to. Let me start with you, Doc, because you really, every day, you, on a daily basis, you do make an encounter with these people. How, what do you make of the free SHS policy itself, how we started and where we are? Well, let me say good evening to your good self and to commend your media outlet for the good work that uh, you have done, which has instigated uh, this assemblage of various personalities uh, to share ideas on the current state of the free senior school policy and in particular the implementation challenges. I believe the goal is for us to have a better understanding of the issues so that we can see how we can work to address them. Uh, clearly I must also acknowledge my co-panelists mm. and as the member of parliament for Bursa South, I know that this program has been widely advertised. So let me acknowledge the people of Bursa South 
for giving me the opportunity to be in the national capital, to be in parliament, and to be part of this August panel. Mm. I would have wished that you would have allowed those who introduced the current form mm. of the Free High School policy to speak first, rather than me. Mm. But be as it may, mm -hmm. you have put the lot on my head, mm -hmm. so I will speak. From where I sit, we believe as the NDC, because that is the party I represent, that the Free Senior High School in its current form is a good policy. But we also believe that it is challenged. And we believe that as a nation, we ought to look at what we can do to address the challenges so that the benefits that we are getting from it would be magnified. Mm. So whilst we accept and agree, as most Ghanaians do, that the policy is a good policy, we also have been advocating and calling attention to those who have been entrusted with the power of the state, with the ability to utilize our resources for our good, to do the needful by addressing the challenges holistically. For example, we cannot deny the statistics that with the introduction of the policy, we have seen an increase in enrollment. But we must also not forget that it is one thing to talk about enrollment, it is another thing to talk about retention and completion. But we will leave that for another day. Mm. So enrollment has gone up. Mm. Enrollment has gone up because an important barrier, quote unquote, which is the financial barrier per the policy objective has been eliminated, allowing for children who otherwise come from families who don't have the requested resources to finance their secondary education to get an education. There is also an increase in enrollment also because of the changes in terms of the ceiling where hitherto the grade that one required to be able to get access to secondary education from junior high school has been altered. So for example, today, if you have aggregate 40, for example, from junior high school, you are not denied access to secondary education. Mm. But we have problems. And the problems are both born out of the increased numbers, out of poor preparation, and in sometimes a blatant refusal to address them when they are even glaring in the face. One of them is the issue of feeding. Okay. Another is the issue of inadequate academic and residential space. The issue of inadequate furniture is also one that we cannot forget. Mm. In fact, the teachers and the heads of the institutions would also tell you that teachers are being overworked. Many of them, and the teacher unions would confirm, have not had time to rest and recuperate. And so the workload has exerted a lot of brain on them. And that has even bred some levels of social problems. I mean, some have lost their marriages and relationships, particularly so when the double track system was in full gear. And make no mistake, mm. although we don't speak about a double track system the way we used to, but it is still in existence. Oh, yeah. So my assessment is that it is a good policy, but it, it has implementation challenges. Okay. And we ought to hold the bull by the horn, mm. admit those implementation challenges, and address them. And that is why almost every other stakeholder, besides government, mm is calling for a review because it is only proper okay. that when you implement a policy of this magnitude, which demands a lot from the public press, you know, as a member of the Public Accounts Committee, as a member of the Education Committee, I know the quantum of resources that the state has been expending, at least officially. Mm. Okay. okay. And yet, mm. The problems don't seem to go away. Okay. So why is it that 
we continue to finance the program to the maximum okay. as far as parliament is concerned. Because there is no single year where government or the ministry has come with a budgetary request mm. which has been denied. Okay. So why do we still have the problems if we provide, quote unquote, adequate funding? Mm. So that is my initial commentary on the policy. That's why it's good we have you here uh, and all of you so that you can help us find the solutions, really, because we know the challenges. How do we deal with them? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, but let me go on Zoom now. Once I've listened to the man in Parliament, let me listen to the people who are also implementing at the, uh, you know, the, the, the grounds, the senior high schools, and, and listen to them, what they do also make of this. Uh, Primus Barra is National Secretary of uh, CHAS. Primus, you've done this for close to, you know, we're getting close to, close to eight years. What do you make of, you know, the policy itself, and what have you seen with it? So, good evening, Samuel. I also want to use uh, this uh, opportunity um, to say good evening to um, your esteemed panelists. A very big uh, good evening um, to colleagues, um, heads, and teachers all over the country. Mm. Uh, I've received a lot of reactions uh, ever since this program was uh, advertised, even to the extent that uh, when we started the program, some were still calling in. Um, to express their opinions, and, and they want me to bring them to the fore in the course of the discussion. Um, and I want to thank uh, Joy News for this platform. It's, it's very rare to see us in this form, and I'm talking about Charles. So it's a very good opportunity for us to also let the public know, even though over the years, since the implementation of the pre-senior high policy, um, we have been proffering our opinions uh, what we think, what we think are good, and what we think are not going well for us, and the solutions, and, and for that matter, the way forward. So I think it's another opportunity for us, and we are very grateful for that. But uh, to the substantive issue mm. about the policy, I must say that the free senior high school policy is one of the best policies that this country has ever had. No doubt about that, and I'm not sure anybody will contest that. And of course, and as we have been looking at the statistics, that is one of the most apparent uh, uh, justifications for the implementation of the free HHS. Charles just came out of uh, a conference, just, since, just last uh, Saturday, it was an international conference. The executive of the, our counterparts from other parts of Africa uh, you know, were here with us in Ghana. We hosted them this year, known as the African Confederation of Principals, uh, council meeting. We just came out of the conference on Sunday, as I said. And in the course of the presentations that were given from all over Africa, you realize that free senior high school system or free senior education uh, policy is implemented variously in, in, in uh, different countries across uh, Africa. But of course, when we're doing the comparison, you will realize that the, the manner and form in which it is imp implemented in Ghana, is much, much more comprehensive. It's much, much more involving to the extent that the, the, by the policy, by the policy framework, it caters for everything as far as education is concerned, right from fees, you know, to feeding, to, um, you know, everything as far as education is concerned. There's no, so there's no doubt, nobody can contest how bold the government has been and how wonderful this program has been. Mm. But as is, uh, as is of any other uh, policy or any uh, endeavor, there are a number of challenges. And like I indicated, for Charles, uh, well, if we have the opportunity to even point them out, this wouldn't be the first time. Uh, we have always pointed them out. In fact, over the years, like I indicated, at each of our conferences that we have always held, the last one being last year, October, in Accra there, at Achimota School, we have always uh, pointed out uh, some of the, the, the rough edges of the policy. And we equally point out the way we, as Charles or as chief implementers of this policy, is the way forward. So, um, of course, there are some implementation policies, um, such as, uh, you know, as we still talk, there are a lot of schools that are still beset with infrastructural, uh, you know, uh, constraints. The issue of funding, um, funding, which in respect of release of funds, mm. the issue of infrastructure, I think I've mentioned that, depreciating uh, infrastructure here and there, the issue of uh, food, 
it's also it also counts. So there are quite a number of uh, challenges, and I believe that as we progress uh, with the discussions, mm. we'll be able to pinpoint to specific issues, and then uh, as well as uh, those areas that we think uh, are also like uh, one of the cases that has mentioned that has been mentioned earlier on. Enrollment is one of the very significant thing about free HHS. The issue of uh, the cost being borne by government has taken off a lot of burden from parents, and that okay. explains why there are increments. But as you, as, as I indicated, you will have this, uh, uh, what do you call it, benefits coming vis-a-vis -vis the challenges. So for me, I think the, going forward, the important thing at the end of the day is for all stakeholders, and I'm talking about teachers, mm. teacher union, of course, which includes the teacher unions. I'm talking about parents. I'm talking about government. I'm talking about everybody who has an interest in education. It's for us to begin to look at the, a broader consultation uh, mechanism where we shall we should always try as much as possible to constantly look at the issues and see how we can better uh, this policy as the years uh, go by okay and uh, we've implemented it for quite some time now mm. it's been a while mm. and i think uh, it's actually really important this is this is your your platform is a very good example of the right opportunity for us to begin to look at the issues and see how we can better this policy okay this is what i have to do for now but i'm grateful to you for for those uh, thoughts there uh, let me come to kofi asari here Kofi, you, you've, you've done a lot of work in this. First, did we start off on the right note? And why is it that after all these years, we are still not, we don't seem to get it right in terms of dealing with the challenges uh, head on? Well, um, I'm not sure we are not getting it right in okay. terms of dealing with the challenges. Mm. Every successful policy has challenges. Mm. And, uh, the policy without challenges never took off or never succeeded. Mm. Um, we, in a bid or in our bid to confront this uh, formative challenges, challenges that emerge along implementation lines, you know, uh, have been overly political. And um, when you have that situation, it makes it difficult for the political class mm. responsible for managing the policy to admit, and also it makes it difficult um, for the parents who want genuine reforms to, to strengthen or improve um, or to fill in the gaps, you know, also to, to enjoy what they want. It is because of how the policy was conceived, not too different from how Uganda's free senior school policy was conceived. Both were conceived on political platforms. And there's no way in Africa, apart from South Africa, that free senior high school was not a political promise before it became, you know, policy. Um, and so I keep saying that, you know, the overly political nature of the, of the policy makes it difficult to admit genuine, genuine challenges. And the context within which challenges are raised sometimes um, is politicized. That context is key, you understand. And, um, and, and sometimes responsible for the apprehensive, you know, uh, posture, or if you like the defensive uh, posture of, 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 of government, you know, um, to confront the obvious. As, we, as, we, as we've come from 2017 to date, I mean, I won't, have to, I won't have to preach to the converted. I mean, everybody here has acknowledged the, the gains of the policy. And so I think it is time for us to dive into what the challenges really are and how we can improve the challenges going forward. For me, the, the, the only challenge surrounding the first in high school is that of funding. Funding. And that is the challenges that um, that, that, that everyone envisaged that the policy will face because Ghana is the only country in the world that I know where public secondary education is boarding and is free. Mm. Boarding is the norm in Ghana. Ghana is the only country I know. And I've visited so many countries in Africa and South America to study their free senior high school models before 2012. Okay? And I won't talk about European models of free senior high school, but Ghana is the only country I know in the world where boarding, uh, secondary education is heavily boardernized over 70% mm. and free. And so it was always going to be a challenge financing the cost of boarding education because if you look at our report we did on the cost incidence analysis of the free senior high school, we sought to ascertain what was the cost burden sharing between 2017, before 2017 and after 2017 and to date. At the end of the day, when His Excellency Akufuado was launching the policy at WAS, he indicated that the, the policy is aimed at removing financial access barriers. And he declared that by this launch, the poorest of the poor 
who ordinarily couldn't afford second education can now afford it, and that there will be no financial access barrier. That, that, that was refreshing. But again, the challenge was always going to be that because our model of secondary education is burdened, government will spend more to remove financial barriers. As we speak now, between 2017 and now, an analysis of government per unit spending, how much government spends on every head, okay, in every academic year, indicates that, and compared to an analysis of parents per unit spending every year, mm. I'm talking about prospectus cost, which is about 45% of the parents' parent cost a year, and the non-prospectus cost, that's 55%. If you put them together, in 2023, for instance, it averages about 6,000 cities a year in 2023. That's how much parents spend. Parents? Yes. They are spent on the award? For the whole year. 6,000? Yeah. Between 2017 and 2021, mm. for which expenditure data is available. And we did that analysis taking data from the Ghana Statistical Service, mm. um, items that parents bought interviewed I mean, parents from 20 senior high schools across categories, everything there. And you realize that parents are spending 4,200 and government is spending about 1,230 between 2017 and 2022 and the first five years mm. for which expenditure is available from the side of government. So you realize that as a result of the introduction of the free senior high school policy in 2017, government has absorbed about 23% of the cost originally borne by parents. Mm. And parents are shouldering about 70 you know, percent, more than 70 percent, you understand. Mm -hmm. But you, are, you will see significant increase in enrollment because now the 50 will enter senior high school. 30, it was 30 previously. Now 50 will, 50 will enter. Okay. In those days, between 30 and 50, they were going to private senior high schools, you remember. Mm -hmm. And they were paying even more because they were denied public, you know. So now that they have public access, they're happy to pay and go. That is fine. But there's a group of Ghanaians who, who belong to what we call the lower income quintile. Mm. There are two categories. Category one, those who earn below 5,000 CDs. Sorry, those who spend below 5,000 CDs a year. That is, those whose household expenditure, annual household expenditure is below 5,000. 5, the second is those whose annual household expenditure is below 8,000. Now, average we have about four people in this household. So all the money is not going to one person. Children from this low-income quintile household will struggle. The parents of children in this low-income quintile household mm -hmm. will obviously struggle to raise 6,000 cities a year mm -hmm. to put their children in school. And when I talk about the cost, I'm being realistic because Africa education, we have many students in many senior schools that we are sponsoring. And so I talk about cost as a parent and cost as a sponsor in many schools from category A. We ask students from Presec all the way to um, 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 Zebilas. Uh, uh, so it is not about one particular school. Now, if you are a poor student in this household, you cannot finance the cost of you because the 6,000 cities is not easy to come by. And it will, all, it will continue to be a cost barrier mm. to such students, on, to such households, until we come to terms with the fact that it will be difficult for government to satisfy everybody fully. Government perhaps must look at how it can increase the support it, goes, uh, it extends to students from this poor income and poor, house, poor households, so that they can get more than what my children are getting, mm. you understand. Mm. But how do you do that? Especially where even the little government is providing is not enough. From the time the policy started till date, the average government uh, budget execution in terms of you, what you projected was mainly expenditure and then also allocation. But if you look at the budget execution, the average execution is 70%. In 2020, 2021, for instance, the last year for which expenditure there was available when we were launching our report, only 51% of the budget was executed. So it affects budget credibility, mm. you understand? Mm. So government has demonstrated beyond the years that it is committed to the funding, funding the program. But the, the financing being released to find, fund the program mm. averages 70%. Who takes care of the 30%? It will definitely affect quality in a way. Not quality of learning outcomes per se, but the quality of input. Mm. That is why you will continue to have discussions around f food shortages. Because food is 70% of the budget. Mm. So if only 70% of the budget gets executed or gets disbursed and spent, even one year after the academic year, then it means that the manifestation of the budgetary shortfalls or the expenditure gaps due to government's obviously constricted financial situation is in the food, food availability. Mm. And it's for no reason why, of all the reasons, you always find food and infrastructure. Uh, no, I won't go to infrastructure. Food being 
at the center. Mm. So financing, for me, so far as I'm concerned, mm. is the main problem. Once okay. financing is improved, mm. food issue will be sorted, infrastructure will be sorted. But we don't have the luxury okay. of, of, inad of adequate funds. No country has, has adequate funds. Every country has a scarcity issue. Mm. Mm. So the discussion must be around how we can be cost efficient. Okay. And I'm happy okay. that government itself admits mm. in the most recent IMF review report in January that it, will, it is going to review the free senior school program to ensure that, um, um, to, to rationalize the cost, mm. you understand. It gives us the understanding that perhaps we have now arrived at the same table okay. with government that okay. there's a need for cost rationalization mm. or expenditure mm. rationalization okay. under the program. So, so, so uh, just do this for me and then I'll come. Back. I wanted to deal with my, my mothers. But I see Kwesi Kwatin shaking the head in one of the things. So I'll come to him to pick a response and I'll go back to you. But before, uh, I mean, you did analysis as to how much parents are spending today. Before the policy, how much was the parent spending? Before the policy, the fee was, it was about 1,200 CDs for mm -hmm. borders okay. Okay, in an academic year. The day students, it was virtually free. It was 20 CDs or so. Mm -hmm. okay. But it was 1,200 CDs. Mm -hmm. So there were significant costs. And there were significant cost barriers. Mm -hmm before the policy was introduced. Mm. That was the last student bill that was released. I'm quoting from the last student bill. That yeah. So when the policy was introduced, government absorbed that, 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 that cost. But, but what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that that cost I am mentioning to you is the cost that parents was, is the cost that parents were paying mm -hmm. to the schools. Mm -hmm. The amount parents were paying to the schools was not even half of how much they were spending. Okay. Because the prospectus cost was a cost parents were paid to schools. Mm. You understand? They uh -huh. went to buy. So basically, the 1,200 or so that, were, that parents were paying in 2016, 2017 for an academic year for boarding students mm. mainly comprised the feeding and then uniforms. If you look at the bill, and then a the small, 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 you know, um, electric, uh, no, um, you know utilities, and then those ones. Mm. But the major cost, so far as we, um, the economics of, the, of, of secondary education in Ghana was concerned, Parents spend more preparing their students for school mm. than the direct fees. Yes. Because if you cost a prospectus, mm. this year, because of the harmonized prospectus regime that the genius adapted, it reduced the cost of prospectus considerably. Okay. But at least you require 3,000, you understand, mm. in, in many markets. We costed one from one particular school at Madino Market, and it was 2,300. Later, some items were added. And when they go to school, when they, if I say when they go to school, we have to get students in school. When we got to school, other, other yeah, items were added, mm -hmm. you understand? And so we ended up going around 4,000 for the lowest. Okay. Okay, and some as high as six, 7,000. Mm -hmm. The point I want to make is that parents spend heavily on prospectors and non-prospectors um, items, mm -hmm. different from what they were previously paying Damn. under the free senior school mm -hmm. policy. Okay. And so they are still very, very significant. And in our report, we, have, we interviewed 20 parents. Look, we interviewed 20, 20 parents. We started by interviewing 20 students who were given admission but couldn't go to school over a three-year period. They were placed but couldn't go. The highest aggregate was 14. So in our report, you see the, 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 the interviews are there. Mm. The names are there, you can check. Mm. Now, then we followed that from the schools that they were placed in and went to their junior high schools, <laughs> interviewed their junior high school headmasters, got in touch to their, to their, to, with their parents through their junior high school headmasters, interviewed their parents to find out how Kofi Menu was not able to go to school last year, even though they were placed, and understood the circumstances of Kofi Menu, why Kofi Menu, who had 14, couldn't go to Pandu Technical. Mm. I, I hope you are getting yeah. it. So um, that, is, that is the, the, the story behind the statistics. Mm. I'm not saying that people are not going to school. Mm. Majority of students, 2.5 are in school, okay? Yeah. Over the period, 200,000 were placed, but couldn't add admissions in that particular year. It is, the data is there. This, this last year, 2023, that number reduced to 5,000. Mm. It used to be up to between 10 and 12 percent of the total number of um, placed, placed students. But it reduced to only 2 percent mm. in 2023. And the, the real number was about 7,000 or so. Mm. So we saw a decline. It's not yet a trend, but it happened in 2023, which is great. But the point I want to make is that there are people who are qualifying, they are being placed, and not being able to go to senior high school because there are significant cut barriers. Relating to, in relation to the, the, the expenditure level of their households. Okay. And so we must begin to have a discussion about that, even as we are having issues with feeding. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, go, 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 I'll come to you, Kweku, but, but look, let's balance it. We have mothers here. Let's listen to them. And then I'll come to you so that you can add all of them and then, and then uh, answer. Uh, let, let, me, let me go to um, uh, Madam Harriet Norma. Um, I mean, you listen to Kofi there, and it tells, it, 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 it tells you that, look, there's a challenge that we need to solve. And I'm sure you've also interacted with, with mothers and students as well. Um, how do we deal with this? I mean, if they are spending more to put their children to school, and that's why they are not going in a free uh, senior high school era, then of course, there's, there's, there's something we need to do. What have you seen? What needs to be done? Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. And let, let me reiterate what previous speakers have mentioned, that free SHS policy is a good policy because it's aimed at ensuring that children have access to secondary education. And the data is showing that the number of uh, our wards getting access to senior um, high school education or secondary education is increasing year uh, by year. Yeah. And that is a good thing. Of course, in every uh, undertaking, it gets to a point that you need to pause and take a look at what you have been doing and try to address challenges if there are any, you know, and then so that that endeavor or that undertaking will be improved or enhanced. And so with all the challenges that are coming up, um, for instance, barriers created by prospectors, for instance, mm. I believe the ministry has taken the first step you know, in harmonizing the prospectus. But we could still look at it and reduce um, the items that will have to be taken to school mm. so that the cost can also reduce. Okay. Secondly, we, we have to look at the, the policy again and ask ourselves, or just secondary education mm. and ask ourselves, must every child go to the boarding house don't we have to look at the day schools and have more day schools reduce the cost because it is the boarding schools that are taking a chunk of the cost of education mm -hmm. and you will have to um, you will select a school for your ward you are based in the north and you want your ward for instance to be in in fancy perm or Wesley Girls or Presec. Mm. That's a long journey. Do you, do you get it? And you have to uh, buy all the things that is required to send your ward to school. And so if we have day schools that are taken care of, provided the needed infrastructure and logistics, I mean teaching and learning materials and everything that is required to make those day schools also uh, grade A or first class day schools. Mm. That would help parents to appreciate the fact that my ward can go to a day school and still perform creditably mm. and, and probably find their way to a tertiary institution. Okay. So we should begin to have that broader conversation as well, whether boarding schools are the solutions if we want to have a social program such as free SHS, mm. you know, where 70% of the, the student population will have to land uh, in a boarding school. Mm. That is mm. also one aspect to okay. look at. Okay. Um, another aspect to look at is maybe we have to go back to the drawing table and ask ourselves, from the beginning of the program, did we do any costing? Are, there, are we realizing any changes in the cost? What should we do about it? You know, just opposing that with um, our revenue generation as a country, mm. you know, domestic, because this is domestically funded. And so how much are we generating as a country? What is the cost? What, how did we see the cost from the beginning? Did we anticipate the increases that we are having now? And, and how can we address that um, effectively? Okay. If we find, that, we find that government alone cannot bear the cost, how do we pass on costs to parents such that it does not still prevent anybody from going to school? Mm. And I side with Kofi. It is about time that we 
we establish a good database of the poor and vulnerable in our country, such that when we want to implement such social interventions, we can target, we can target them. You know, we can make it free to an extent for some category of people and make it totally free for those who cannot afford at all. In that sense, you are addressing the same situation. I can send my ward and pay 100 CDs. Mm. Somebody can still send their ward and pay 50 CDs. Somebody will send their ward and pay nothing. At the end of the day, it's like insurance. My 100 and my 50 and your 20 will be added together to also support those who cannot afford at all. I believe that is the way to go because as a country, we are not generating the revenues that we need to address the needs of this country. And if we want to do so now, we would, government will increase taxes here and there, and the citizenry cannot pay those taxes. So we have to sit around the table and dialogue, and that is why this is a good uh, platform to start that discussion. If you just joined us, this is the uh, Joy News National Dialogue, the free SHS promise. If you're listening to us on radio, this is Joy 99.7 FM. So let me bring in the PRO of the Education Ministry, Kwesi Kwarteng uh, uh, here. Uh, Kwesi, so you've listened, uh, uh, you, you've listened to, you know, uh, uh, I mean, Kofi Asar, you've listened to uh, Dr. Park, you've listened to uh, Madame Noama. When Kofi was speaking, you, 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 you seem to disagree with some of the points he was raising. Let me hear those disagreements and I'll come to you with some well, of the things. Well, I well, not, not, not entirely so. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the concerns that he's raised, they are concerns that I uh, agree on principles. Of course, I mean, there are exceptions to some of the concerns that he raised, uh, particularly uh, when he raised uh, the subject of cost and the fact that parents are now paying up to around 6,000 6, to get their prospectors. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that also presupposes that it could have even been worse because in addition to the prospectors, parents would then have, still have to pay for tuition and feeding. Mm. And so whichever way, uh, it all depends on how we no. see the free SHS policy, whether we see it as an investment. Well, you've, you've said something, but I think that there, there's a disagreement here. Hold on, let me, let me come in. Let me, let me, let me, oh, let me thought, br bring in. No, 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 I mean, I mean, yes, but you've said something that people disagree. Let, let me get them to, oh, so, so that we can we I can thought it was, a, it, was, it was an opportunity for I everybody understand. to give preliminary comments. I understand, comments but then. let me bring in, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ambrose Kwajoja. He, he seemed to disagree with some, the thing that uh, uh, Kwasi said here. Yeah, so uh, good evening to our cherished listeners. And then I'm also very happy to be here at this very important national dialogue on the free SHS program. And uh, my union is still of TUC Ghana, I'm the national chairman. So where I disagree immediately is mm. the tuition. Because ever since I even started school in those days, none of us paid tuition. So, and there has been no tuition before the implementation of the free SHS program. Mm. That is what I disagree with. Okay, all right then. Thank well, you. Well, yes. I mean, thank Please you very much. Mm. But I mean, to be fair, mm. if uh, my submission is going to be subjected to marking and remarking to the extent that every time I have to pause, then probably I, I don't think... I'll well, let you have a smooth ride. Let's because, go. I mean, mm. we have listened to so far four speakers now. Yeah. Each one was allowed to flow mm. and... I mean, I, I just pray that same KTXs be also extended to I would, I would extend that particularly to when all parties will have the opportunity I'll, to, I'll to, to that. talk. Let's, let's. But I mean, mm -hmm. bottom line is mm -hmm. that I am saying that there is no correlation between the cost of prospectors and the free SHS policy, policy. Because you see, as soon as you mention cost of prospectors, you are essentially mentioning cost of items. Cost of items, the correlation between cost of items, whether it will go high or it will come down, I mean, I mean it's purely economics. And that largely is occasioned by inflationary prices. So this phone that I'm using, if you bought this phone five years ago, definitely the price is going to be different from how much I'll buy this phone today. And even in some cases, the price is also going to even change from when I bought it five years ago and how much I'm going to buy it in the next 10 years. So it will be a very simplistic analysis for you to just pick a nominal value in, say, 10 years ago, and then pick out that of this year and say that 10 years ago, 
parents were paying for prospectors at, say, 1,000 cities. And that after 10 years, if parents are now paying for prospectors for 6,000, it presupposes that then the FASS policy has rather burdened parents more. I mean, that argument will be very simplistic. Because before you, you are able to make a very holistic conversation or argument about cost, you have to factor in all inflationary pressures and inflationary factors that has or is existent within the time frame that you are measuring, I mean, whatever analysis that you are doing. I mean, that was just by the way to, mm -hmm. to let Kofi know that uh, you, you cannot just say that we, as a result of free SH experience, are rather paying more. Mm. That would be a very simplistic analysis for anybody to make. And again, is that also not the more reason why? That some way, somehow, government may also have to intervene and even reduce their burden. That is why I've always insisted that it all boils down to how you see the free SSS policy. Whether you see it as an investment policy or you see it as a policy of expenditure. If you see it as an investment policy, your, your narrative, your thinking, your embracing of the policy will be different from how you see it when you consider it as, a, a, as an expenditure. Of course, I have heard sections of Ghanaian saying that <laughs> other sectors of the economy probably is not doing well because they believe that a lot of monies are being turned into the free SHS policy. But look, what occasioned the free SHS even in the first place? You see, we've always made a point, and that has been the significant point from, from the education minister, Dr. Yosedochim. He said that education is largely anchored on three key variables. The first one is access, the second has to do with quality, and then the third has to do with relevance. And when we talk about relevance, we are talking about the impact of education on the socioeconomic transformation. So we have to situate all this conversation in that right proper or that very proper context. How do we situate it in the context? The context is what is the length of education and socioeconomic transformation as a people? Are we ready to transform our fortunes as a people? Are we ready to change as a people? Are we ready to boost our economy as a people? Those are the fundamental questions that we have to ask. If the answer is in the affirmative, yes, then the principle is how then do we get there? We can only get there through investing in education. So from us, from the Ministry of Education, and of course the President of Ghana, the free SHS policy is an investment policy. Investment in the areas of assets. Because I mean, if you look at the enrollment data, for instance, if you look at 2014, for, for, for instance, 2014, in terms of the number of students that were placed, that is about 38,600, no, it's around, sorry, 386,412. Okay. Out of this number, only 273,152 represents about 70.69% actually, went, actually to went to school and okay. Now, compare this same figure to 2023. In 2023, 554,034 SHS students were placed. And out of this number, you have 504,580 apparently taking up the admission and getting enrolled. That's about 91.7%. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, beyond even the, I mean, the, the percentage statistics, let me make it in simple terms for you. Before the free SHS policy, every year when students graduate from BEC and they have to go to proceed to the senior high schools, at least you have a minimum of 100,000 students that were denied access to uh, education, higher education, of course, largely because of these cost barriers that we've already uh, uh, highlighted. Mm. And even the number of students that also proceeds to the senior high schools, by the time they get to second year, you have about 20% of them dropping. So at least virtually we look into the faces of ordinary Ghanaians, children. Of course, we, I mean, the strategy has always been that you use, uh, 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 how do you call it, barriers like your grading system. Mm -hmm. you, you put a mark or a benchmark on it. If you do not get A grade or B grade, you, don't, you are not eligible to go to school instead of probably giving them opportunities to justify themselves. So every year, as a country, we look into the faces of more than 100,000 Ghanaian youth, Ghanaian students, and just deny them access to education. Now, I've already indicated that the whole essence of education is the relevance of it. Mm. The link between education and socioeconomic transformation. As I speak with you, our gross tertiary enrollment ratio just went uh, a lot about 20, 20, 20%. And all over the world, no country has ever developed without their gross tertiary enrollment ratio hitting about 40% mark. Where are you going to get the students moving up to the tertiary level? They obviously have to come from the second basic school level to the secondary level and to the tertiary level. Every country that has developed in this world, 
at least their gross tertiary enrollment ratio, the mark is about 40%. You look at Botswana, 40%. You look at America, 76%. You look at Singapore, 40%. You look at South Korea, around 96%. These are countries that have developed. And you sit here in Ghana and make an argument that you are going to compete with these countries. At a time where your gross tertiary enrollment ratio is still less than 20%. Of course, it's recently that we were able to boost it more than 20%. So what it essentially means is that we had a very long way to go. But of course, a president comes in, he's saying that I'm going to intervene using the leapfrog approach to make sure that we give a lot of access so that we also be able to get more people to enter the tertiary, increase our gross tertiary enrollment ratio. Then you have an impact on the relevance and bingo, you hit the socioeconomic transformation that the country is looking at. Mm. So, like I indicated, it depends on all how you, you see it. Of course, I am also not oblivious of the fact that you also have to look at the quality component. Okay. Because the fact that you are talking about access does not necessarily mean that hey, you just have to be producing anything. Because if you are talking about access and the, and the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, graduates you are churning out are not the best, essentially, uh, I mean, obviously, it's going to have an impact on your socioeconomic okay. transformation that okay. you are looking at. Mm -hmm. So, yes, concerns about quality that has been raised, is, they are very legitimate concerns and ought to be, be looked at. But for me, uh, I would say that as a people, certainly we are not obviously where we have to be. Mm -hmm. But where we used to be, too, okay. we are certainly not there. Because where the, we, where the, yeah, be. the data, I mean, for instance, if you look at all the, the, the in terms of even the phrase such as the outcome, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023, you realize that the free graduates are the only years in the past nine years that more than 50% of the candidates obtained A1 to C6. So there has been significant boost today, just last year. Looking at Northern region, having an enrollment of about 91%, mm -hmm. unprecedented, the highest. So yes, we, I mean, on the face value, just like any other policies, I mean, if you give me pen and paper to less challenges we have in other sectors of the economy. Yes, Everybody is going to get okay. for you. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> a, 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 a lot of the challenges, I want us to situate this within the proper okay. context, that right. these challenges were not occasioned necessarily by the free researchers. Mm. If for any other reason we should see any free researchers in any light, it should be in the light of an investment. Of course, I have listened, I mean in London, I have listened to other presenters I mean, making a case that we should be able to target, uh, how do you call it, uh, students and parents who are poor and provide those poor, 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 poor interventions to them. Mm. But of course, a country that has not even gotten that very concrete and right database to be able to distinguish the salaries, particularly within those in the informal category. How do you then look into somebody's face mm. and say, I'm going to deny you education because I know the tax component your father is paying or I know the salary or the profit that your father is making okay. at, the, at the expense of others. So. Mm. We, I mean, it, it has to be a very aggressive okay. intervention okay. to be able to make sure that we get to the right. level that we yeah, are. Let me bring in Dr. Mantebia Boy here. Doc, so did you rush in making uh, senior high school free? Hmm. That's, a, that's a big one. I think that we have heard a lot so mm. far. Mm. Probably looking back, maybe things could have been done a little differently. I don't know whether we could have piloted a bit to see how it goes and then we scale it up nationally. I mean, that would have been an option. But then again, here we are and we have heard of all the successes that have come out of the policy that has been made. And indeed, everybody here has acknowledged that it's been largely successful, but it has not been without the challenges that have been mentioned. And definitely, we are seeing those challenges because of how it was implemented to so where do we move from here? I think that it's time for us to sit together, have the right people, all stakeholders together to have conversations. Definitely everybody wants all children to have good access to education. We want them to be able to do well. But then parents are stakeholders, teachers are stakeholders, the government is also a major stakeholder we are seeing that these are some of the problems that are coming out of this policy that has been implemented over the years. How do we move forward from here? The other issue, if you look at the video that was shared, mm -hmm. the documentary that was shared, you mm -hmm. can see that a lot of people were going anonymous. People are afraid, some people are afraid to speak up openly. We have heard 
some cases in the media about people being removed and all that from office and all that. So there should be openness. There should be a lot of transparency because there's something that affects all of us. And indeed, there are parents who are unable to afford, rightly so, and there are some who say that they are willing to pay so that their children do not suffer hunger in schools mm. or the overcrowding and all that does not become a problem. So if we have a platform where all these people have a voice, there is where we will find all the solutions rather than, well, again, because it's been so highly politicized, but we all have to move away from the, everybody has applauded the presidents for and the governments for this initiative as it's been a very good one. But as the challenges have arisen, we all need to own up and see the way forward, remove some of the politics or all of the politics if possible, because the country should have an agenda or a national plan for development that is not like partisan. So once we all know that this is what we want as a people, then it doesn't matter who is saying what. We, we will have to look at the facts as it is and see what the problem is. If looking at the challenges that have arisen, we think that, okay, more day schools may work for certain areas, then we can look at it scientifically and arrive at solutions to the problems or the issues that are arising. If food is the problem, how do we get more food to these schools? If funding is the problem, how do we get funding for these schools? Rather than all this fear, you know, in some cases, because then it's as if, well, if it smells like a duck, it walks like a duck, then it must be a duck, and a double-double, it must be a duck. You see, so everybody is saying there are challenges. So we need to just come together. And government is in the right place to say that, let's look at this, let's review it. And it may cost, nothing good comes free. You know, there have been some sacrifices, but we've made a lot of progress with this. And we can see that people are committed to having children have access. So that is not of question. That is not in question at all. Everybody wants children to have access to education. So now, where do we move from here? Okay, okay, interesting perspectives there. Let, let me go to the the, the A reaction on the fear bit. Just a quick the, one. The a quick reaction yeah. on, the, on the fear bit. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me, let me bring in I've, the I've tertiary now. education workers. Uh, you, you want me to allow him? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So oh, you want me to? You want me to allow him to do that? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. let, let him come. I, sh I should do that yeah. for yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, yes. On quickly, so quickly on the fear bit. Mm -hmm. Of course, you see, from the Ministry of Education, we take every criticism as a positive feedback to improve. Uh, what we are doing to make sure the policy thrives and become very sustainable. Uh, a lot of times when particularly the media brings an information out, when we ask you to give, for instance, list of schools or naming, we want to make it clear that it is not as though we want to witch hunt or victimize any person. And I've always insisted that uh, in many cases, where these claims are made. I've always asked that, has there been any single headmaster who has been sagged or demoted or punished just because a person came out? You but see, see but, but in the press, no, can we've, I read, can we've, I read, read, yes. we've read statements where a headmaster has been asked to probably uh, proceed on leave or has been transferred. Can I land? Can I land? I'm not sure the suggestion is also that mm. because there is a free SHS policy in terms of internal disciplinary measures, oh. We should just keep quiet on it. Because look, there was a case in WAS. Mm. That's why I I, I with it for no, this. Yes, so that, I, you see, the point I want to make is that mm. we should take these cases in isolated basis and just treat them that, well, this headmaster was relieved of this position or demoted. And what was the reasons ascribed to it? Because for me, if indeed headmasters are afraid to speak, what also happens to their own associations like Nagrat, Chas? NAT and CCT, which has become more, more or less the official spokesperson 
of this hair teachers okay. in all. So when we create an, you see, a lot of times, for instance, Joy did a documentary. I, I'm London, but it's very important that Ghanaians know. Mm -hmm. As we said, we are closing at nine, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. Joy did a documentary. Mm -hmm. that, there are other issues that we need to talk about. So. <laughs> we, we, we need to talk about. So, so no, Dr. Pak, Dr. Pak, I'm, I'm London, I'm London, I'm London. Yeah, yeah, for me, for yeah. instance, you did a documentary, mm -hmm. and our first uh, comment was that, can we get a list of the schools and intervene? Then the response is that when we give you the list of the schools, you are going to punish the teachers. You see, I feel that a lot of times too, it may also be a way to run away from responsibility. Because ultimately, if you don't give us the list of the schools, how do we then resolve Who is them? running away from responsibility? I don't, I don't know. Because a lot, you see, particularly a lot of the claims, <coughs> a lot of the claims, the anyway. fact that you bring a claim does not mean that such a claim cannot be interrogated. Mm. But I'm saying that there has not been a single instance where any head teacher has been victimized or demoted on account of speaking on free SHS policy. Well, if, there, well, if, if well, there has been well, any well, instance, well, if there has well, been well, any, this if, is, if we, we dwell here, we might, not, we might not proceed. So you let's move on. I'm sure that when time comes, we can be. You think Charles we, will sit there, mm, Nagrat will sit there, no, CDC no, will no, sit there. No, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll come there. Let me bring in the uh, Tertiary Education Workers Union well, uh, President, Chairman. Mm. Teachers and yes, Education Workers tertiary. Union, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Ambrose uh, Kojoja. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, so the free SHS, as all the panelists acknowledge, mm. it's a, a nice policy, it's a very good policy. Me personally, it helped me in my community. Okay. So it's a very good policy to remove cost barrier, to enable all uh, students of school going age to assess secondary mm. and technical education. Very good. But there is so much cost that is associated with the real teachers that go government has put on itself. And then I must state beforehand that um, the, the, the free has not been fair to all Ghanaians. The free hasn't been fair to, fair all, to Ghanaians. all Ghanaians. How? I want to state it. Mm. That is, every Ghanaian would have want to be a boarding student. Every Ghanaian student would have want to be in the boarding school. But because it is not fair to everybody, it's not all that have access to boarding school. If you come to Accra in particular, there are students who commute from Kasua and other places to very far schools and pay a lot of money for the transportation. They spend hours in traffic, two hours in, two hours back. So if you put all those things into perspective, you see that the free SHS policy has not been fair to all Ghanaians. Mm. And some of those people are the people from very poor home. We happen to make journey to some of their homes. It is horrible. And there are the people who are rather disadvantaged, commuting daily from a very far places to institutions that they want to go to. That is why I made that statement. So if somebody will be kept in the boarding house and fed three times, and somebody who commutes daily, to school and back is fed once. Mm. Then you can tell me that already the cost barrier that we want to eliminate has been embedding on the person who is commuting from house and back. Mm. The person feed himself two times, he takes transportation in and out, he does all other things that is supposed to be done. So the burden on that person is heavier than the people who are in the boarding house. But, but, but should I, is that a major, because, is that a major a issue? Because, uh, I mean, uh, if you look at it, before SHS, before free SHS, people were still commuting from wherever to, to other schools. Mostly so, it, was, it was a choice then, because people are not able to pay the boarding fee at a go. So they decide to be committed to that list. Every day when a market to my money to sell something, is able to give something to the son or daughter to go to school and back. Yes. But now, once it is free and boarding is free, let everybody benefit from what is free to all Ghanaians. That is what I want to say. Mm. Then with the introduction of the free SHS and the population in the schools has put much more burden on infrastructure. Those days when schools vacate for about two or three months <clears throat> and schools actually hide the premises to other people and use the money out of their hiring expenses to maintain the infrastructure. So when the students come back, there is freshness in the system. We use that same money to fumigate the schools. 
But now all those things are not existing. The burden of using the, uh, the equipment daily, hourly, minute by minute basis is embedding the infrastructure. Let us not forget these schools have been established years ago, 100 years, 60 years, 70 years, 50 years. So the items used in establishing the schools, most of them have deteriorated. And we are dealing with adolescent children. Mm. The other time I visited a school in the classroom, the students were sitting on the tables. There was no teacher at that time. So the, I say, ah, you don't sit on table. Why do you sit on table? So he sat and shaking the table anyhow. So I controlled them and they have to sit in their chairs. Mm. So these are some of the destructive elements we have among the teens. They destroy at will. So, and then uh, the cause that you are talking about, that there is so much about cause barrier. I mentioned that funds are not being released to the school on the radio they are daddy. And then my brother, I'm, here, I'm happy he's here today. So today we'll do reconciliation. <laughs> we'll do reconciliation. Like reconciliation. Yes, yes, we'll do that. Yeah. Mm. So, you see, monies are not being released in, in respect of sanitation because it's a huge cost in schools. And then if you don't take care of sanitation, then we are endangering the student's life That's true. in the institutions. Do you see? Mm. As we are talking now, per record, government pay one city 50 pesos for sanitation per student. But the cost of sanitation at a point, I mean, you cannot even recount it. It's huge. So government has to consider mm. that price. Okay. One city 50 pesos per mm. student for sanitation a semester. Mm. It is okay. unacceptable. Okay. So it yes. has to be reviewed. That is just your review. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, you, you move to maintenance. Mm. Maintenance of briefly infrastructure, for me. yes, we need briefly. To move on. Mm. I, because there is no money coming in, in respect of maintenance. Electricity bulbs, plumbing items, and all other things that we can talk about, they are all falling apart. Okay. Yes, so I want to bring that to the notice of this discussion. Mm, mm. And and you don't you have money for maintenance in here. Um, I'll let all of you have a bite of, of, of I mean, you have a point that just noted for me. But on the, on the point of victimization, because we have the chance, uh, uh, President, with us, I want us to go to him so that we can really uh, understand him. He's the National Secretary of Chas. Um, uh, Primus, I mean, he's, yes, he's, he, his, point, uh, his point is that nobody is victimized for speaking up on free SHS policy. You are there. What, what's your viewpoint on that as well? Um. Sammy, a very slippery question. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, being, being, being a national secretary and for that matter, a national executive, maybe um, I will cite an example that is closer to me. I wish I were asked um, in the, uh, to, to, in, uh, to come with a list or some uh, reported or, I mean, uh, allegations of victimizations in the past. Not necessarily in the present, but since the implementation of the Recent high school. Um, things may seemingly or may apparently look uh, very, uh, quite smooth now because of, uh, I, mean, uh, over, I mean, as compared to the initial stages um, of the implementation of the free senior high school. Um, I want to be very frank with you, um, especially at the very beginning of the implementation. Um, like I indicated, unfortunately, I'm not being able to gather data. But there are, in history, mm. in the history of the implementation, there have been instances where, under normal circumstances, certain utterances uh, made by individual heads uh, or certain actions should not have been as serious as it. Let me give you, let me give you a very, and I, was, I started by saying that I'll give you an example where I, I myself am I'm, I'm, I'm involved. In 2020, when we went to, uh, Western region for our conference. Mm. Um, and we, 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 I think we had it at uh, Ashbiton, uh, Bishop Porter's uh, senior high school mm -hmm. entirely. In, when we, in the welcome address of our president, that uh, Alaji A.B. Uh, Abubakar, uh, he's the immediate past uh, headmaster for, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, Amas uh, in Kumasi. He just handed over to Reverend Father Stephen, my current uh, headmaster. Just a remark, just a remark that the free HSS policy needed to be reviewed. Hmm. 
it was a big problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I now I laugh over it because, uh, you know, over the years, the wounds have been healed and, uh, you know, mm. we were summoned. And I, I'm, talking, I'm, I'm being very serious about it. Mm. Just the use of the word review. That time, Alaji, like I indicated, was the president. Kwame Edumi was uh, secretary. I was the vice secretary. Dr. Shine, who is headmistress for West African Senior High School in Accra, there, was a treasurer. Mr. Fiamawel, the Accra Academy headmaster, I mean, uh, 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 was uh, the uh, what do you call it? The, so you no, you you, the, you were sermon because you used the, the the word review. Just the word review. Mm. And what and happened? There are there are subtle ways. There are I'm saying there are occasions. I'm sure if you open the WhatsApp line and ask headmasters to indicate uh, various ways in which some people have been intimidated in one mm. way or the other mm. uh, by making certain utterances, by taking certain actions, uh, uh, you the number of responses you get will be enormous. That is not to suggest, that is not to suggest in any way that uh, also, I mean, in every society there are the bad nuts. Uh, some have voted, acted, some have acted in a way and a manner which is mm. which cannot be justified in any way. In any case, we're always the first people to, under. but to totally say that victimization has not, had not existed or it didn't happen in one way or the other, uh, well, I don't know. But for me, I think in one way or that, unfortunately it happened. <laughs> and I may not be able to give you the statistics now, mm. but it didn't happen. And I'll tell you, I tell mm. you that even this, uh, you know, this uh, program when it was advertised, <laughs> if I tell you the number of cautions that I got, I say, oh no, but it is not like, uh, uh, what you rightly put it, I don't think I'm coming to a slaughterhouse. I'm only coming to air uh, my views <laughs> or not my, even my personal view, but a view of charts, mm. which in any case is nothing new anyway. <laughs> it's nothing new. We have heard it over the years. We have been, we have been engaging with what thing. So, so, so it, is, it is not something, it's not something that is easily heard these days, mm. but I can tell you as a national executive behind the doors, we've gone into, you know, uh, pleat okay. on a number of occasions for some simple, simple things. So it's not as easy as okay. that. It's okay. not for nothing that people speak on anonymity. So mm. we cannot trade away overboard. It is there, but maybe it's been reducing over the years uh, up to now. And I, sometimes it's understood. Okay. Because, uh, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. I leave it there. Uh, I'm grateful to you, uh, Primus Barrow there. So, so uh, do, 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 let, let me bring let me bring in Dr. Because Park. Because, um, these, these. I don't, 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 oh, yes, yeah, don't I, worry. I, I, I'll bring it. Let me bring in Dr. Yeah. Park here because Dr. Park. Have these things been brought to your attention? Where, where I sit, mm -hmm. I can tell you I know of many, many instances where heads of institutions have been penalized these days. Look, make no mistake, <laughs> the culture of silence is real. I mean, this is a whole not a uh, chance secretary. Mm -hmm who is even cautious, and he was cautioned mm. before he came onto the program. We all remember, you know, Osu Prisek, what happened mm. to the headmaster when, you know, the students were, were sitting on, uh, I believe, plastic chairs, was it, stones, and he Tools. said the parents should provide furniture and they bought plastic chairs. Even a, a group of Headmasters, head teachers, filed a case against the Ghana Education Service. So the culture of silence is real. There are many, many, many people who are still afraid and intimidated mm. to speak freely about the challenges. Okay. Look, your own documentary that you did, mm. why did you do undercover? I tell you that if the ministry or GES had foreknowledge that you were going to go to those schools where you went to investigate mm. and present us with visuals and commentaries, mm. real life narrations of what we've known all along in the format that you did, there is no way you, have, you would have been given permission to do that. Mm. So that in itself should tell you that the freedom to speak freely and to advocate okay. and to bring the issues to mm. bear, mm. particularly for those who are mandated to manage the school. Okay. Is not there. And that is a fact. Okay. If they can do better, well and good. Okay. But he shouldn't deny. Okay. People still feel intimidated. Okay. Speaking about the challenges, bedeviling the Fishna High School policy. Mm. And if you allow me for my second round, should I continue? You, no, no, no. When we come, you, you, you bring it, you bring it, you bring in more of those issues. Very well. Because I yeah. just extracted a document. Okay. All right. Then. When we come back, you bring up all of the content. Wow. When I come back, I'll let you. I'll let you address on the, it on this one. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because you have, like, you, you have, the, the, panelists you have the chance to address Very it. Well. Uh, this is still the Joy News National Dialogue.
on the free SHS promise. Let me share with you our WhatsApp line. You can send in your thought. We'll share those thoughts with the rest of our viewers and listeners as well on radio. The WhatsApp line is 055 11 11 11 11 makes me remember a uh, Yokogari joint in Takradi. 11 11. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. All right, so welcome back to the Joy News uh, National Dialogue, the Free SHS Promise. This is also live on radio, Joy 99.7 FM, around the world on myjoyonline.com and on our social media platforms. You can share your thought with us via WhatsApp line 055 11 11 997. So do share your thought and we'll share that with the rest of our viewers and listeners. Well, um, uh, let me start with you. You, you had some yeah. point to, to, to make. Yeah, uh, I think everything said is, is, is good. Mm -hmm. My only concern is that particularly on starting from the whole point about victimization, mm -hmm. uh, I believe that we should be very mindful and careful uh, not to promote a culture where we may be turning our schools into, let's say, presenters. You see, if you look at the structure of Ghana Education Service, which uh, happens to be the agency responsible for the management of the pre tertiary space, there is a defined structure of communication, whether reporting or complaining on any uh, issue that has come into the school. Of course, coming from the district directory level to the regional directory level, even up to the GES level, and even the Ministry of Education, too, there are also channels of communication. Mm. You see, it, it's almost becoming like it's only in uh, government of Ghana when government of Ghana happens to be the employer and the other being employees. That is where we feel that there is that liberty to uh, speak on any subject matter. Of course, I mean, that, that, that level of freedom, because the entire motive is to make sure that we strengthen the racism policy, but we have to be very mindful and strike the balance. Because if you are not very careful, any person gets out to speak. Especially when the policy is a policy that is, uh, I mean, the, the, the background or the backdrop came from a bit of some, I mean, political, uh, or give some level of political leverage to a politically exposed person. If you are not very careful, <laughs> you may get a day where a teacher feels like I want to say this, a student feel like I want to say this, any other person feel like I want to say this, mm. and that may, may not work out. So that balance should be there. Okay. I also want to comment on, uh, uh, I think you, you raised a point about the burden issues that mm. the phrases policy is rather not being fair. But I want to take the opportunity to briefly explain the placement exercise. Okay. You see, if you look at this year, the placement statistics that we had, for instance, 2023, uh, for instance, we had about 634,000. 540 declared vacancies. Out of this, only 477,772 vacancies were, were, filled. were filled. So there was even an excess of 156,748. So most times, if a student complains that he was not placed in, let's say, a boarding house or a school, largely is based on choice. Because if you look at available vacancies, it's even more no. than... <laughs> I mean, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the numbers that were even available. So, so you're saying that all of them could have been admitted yes, in the yes, boarding Yes, it's, it's largely based on choice. Because if you look at the placement regime, mm. nobody imposes a choice on you. You are eligible to make a choice based on the program you want to offer in terms of res residential status, even in terms of the school that you want to go. So they, there can be situations where you even have a school with low enrollment, but other school, particularly the highly subscribed schools, actually being stacked. So it is not a situation of, for instance, uh, the non-availability of space. It has more to do with choice. Uh, so that clarification ought to be made. And of course, I think there was also a point on pressure on infrastructure. I, I get it. I get the point that uh, uh, my, 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 my senior was making. I'm but largely, I'm you I'm see, I'm yes, uh, uh, largely, you see, that is the, the general rule. The general rule is that as soon as all over the world, access increases, uh, there is pressure on infrastructure, and even sometimes to a larger extent, even outcome 
actually reduces or comes down. But you see, in the case of Ghana, we were very proactive and novel, particularly with the introduction of the double track system. It's, the reverse was, however, true in our case. Because in the case of Ghana, what we did was that we were able to defy gravity. Because if we have, for instance, 5,000 students that ordinarily have to be in school, with the introduction of the, of the double track, it means that at every point you have about 2,500 students being in school. Also creating more space, more room, reducing the pressure on the infrastructure, at the same time making sure that you have increased access, of course, in terms of the quality, the outcome speaks for itself. So every discussion has to be situated in that very right context where the statistics also guide us with what mm. we see. Okay, all right. Grateful to you. Now, let, let's come into the, the issues confronting the implementation. And, and I want to start with Primos, uh, because uh, they, as we said, they are the grassroots implementers they, of they the policy. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, Primos is National Secretary of Charles. Primos, um, we I mean, having implemented this policy for a while, said what are the, the, yeah, what are the exactly. major, uh, Primus, you know, uh, challenges confronting this? We've gone out there and we've... And we've heard a lot of people talk about feeding, feeding, feeding. What are the situation yeah. on the ground? Major, uh, you know, uh, challenges confronting this. We've gone out there and we've, and we've heard a lot of people talk about feeding, feeding, feeding. Primus. What are the situation yeah. on the ground? Major, uh, you know. Uh... Hello, Primus. A lot of people talk yes. about. Uh, I yes, I think I'm, 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 I'm online. Yes, I'm, so, so, so I'm asking that since. We've implemented this for some time. Certainly. You are the grassroots implementers. We've heard people talk about the fact that feeding, feeding is a challenge, infrastructure. What are the, what's the situation in terms of the challenges confronting the implementation of this SHS policy? Yes. Unfortunately, the network is just gone terrible. I think this is a very interesting part, but mm -hmm. I don't know whether you're hearing me. I'm not getting you at all. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. Now. I'm hearing you, Primus. Okay, okay. Now it's come back. So let, let me get your question again. So I, I wanted you to share with us, I mean, the main challenges confronting the implementation. We've heard people talk about the fact that feeding is a major challenge. You are there. What's the situation like? Yes. Um... Certainly, there's no smoke without fire. If people are talking about uh, feeding as one of the major challenges that is confronting a free HHS, it could not have come from the sky. Remember, uh, uh, people are parents. We have millions, as many as the number of students who are in the senior high school, you have almost equal number being parents out there, citizens of Ghanaians being out there. And every parent is genuinely concerned about a feeding problem. Anybody who will say that we don't have a challenge with feeding um, will, not be, will not be a very accurate uh, information you are giving out there. And like I indicated, all the issues that we have always pointed out is nothing new today. I have in my hand the 20, uh, and I've, I took as late as 2021 up to the latest of all our communiques we have always issued at the end of every conference that we hold. And in 2021, this was a conference, this was a conference communique that was uh, issued in Bolgatanga. And on feeding, in fact, it's, it was a 21 point communique. Okay. And I'm sure even all the your media house, the ministry, everybody has it. Anytime we issue a communique, we circulate it in that respect. Mm. Out of this 21 point communique, four of them, were situated on feeding. And what were the issues? Number one, the timeliness, and as of the 21, the issue of timeliness and adequate releases was a big, 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 big challenge. We had instances, and even now, we still have instances where schools will reopen without, uh, you know, without food. There are instances like that. We also have instances we used to complain bitterly, and let me read this. Timely and adequate release, releases in respect of funds should always be done, especially before the reopening of schools, to curb the stress of schools reopening without funds and relevant logistics, and the stress of having to squeeze water from rock in order to keep the schools going. Mm. The unsatisfactory performance of the Vapor Store Company must be addressed to avoid the poor, unreliable, 
erratic supply of food staff to schools. Indeed, it has to be re-looked at and addressed immediately. Mm. Then the Ministry of Education, Ghana Education Service, and the relevant allies should immediately review the prices of food items. This has to do with prices of food items. In fact, 2021, we're talking about the issue of uh, looking at the, the operations of buffer stock. If you run down to 2022, where we held a conference at Koforidua, in fact, in Koforidua, we actually talked about uh, scrapping off the buffer stock completely, because at that time, it was very, very, very terrible. Now, let, 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 me, let me pause here and just send you back a little bit on the history of uh, the history of feeding challenges in school since the implementation of the free senior high school system. Mm. Now, when the free senior high school system was introduced in 2037, I mean 2017, mm -hmm. 2017, 2018, 2019, some of these challenges were existent, but they were not so profound. They were not very... Well, uh, so that's uh, Primus Barrow. Uh, he is National Secretary of SHAS. Uh, well, we'll still get him back on the line because he was giving us a lot of issues. Uh, but uh, um, uh, so we'll get Primus back so we can have that. that chat I think I. Okay, good, good. Book somewhere exactly, exactly Primus. He <laughs> has to continue for us. Let's hear you. Oh, God. <laughs> Primus, your, your line is can okay. You we, can, we can hear you clearly. Wow. Primus, I can, we, we can hear you clearly, so, so you, can, you, can, you can still make your point. <laughs> Hello, Primus. You, we can still hear you. I, I can still hear your background quite clearly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I, I got to a point. I don't know where I lost out, but I got to a point okay, so, so, where so, I was referring. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Since you can, yes. uh, you look I, like you're getting your thought yes. back, so continue. Yes, so I got to a point mm. where I was trying to give a kind of uh, uh, historical, historical, the yeah, mm. the historical mm. and longitudinal analysis of how this food situation has traveled since the implementation of the free HHS. Mm -hmm. So um, I was saying that, in fact, from the implementation stage in 2027 up to 2021, these issues about feeding, erratic food supply, inadequate, inadequate feeding. Underweight, sub, underweight food uh, supplies, poor quality food. These problems were not very, very, very profound. You could find them in very isolated cases. Mm. But from 2021 up to date, it has become more and more profound as compared to the years that I just mentioned earlier on. Mm. Indeed, to the extent that, and I have a letter that I have here, uh, which is dated the 5th of November, 2022, Yes, 2022, which we wrote to the Honorable Minister. And in that letter, we cited an instance of what, we, what was then existing as emergency food supplies. Emergency food supplies because at that time, all the contractors who were supplying under, under the buffer stock system were refusing to supply. And all because they indicated that the, the, the amounts of money that was paid, that were paid for the supply of food items fell far below the market price. Mm. So you had a situation where most of the suppliers, a lot of the suppliers were just refusing to supply. And even those who will supply will come to negotiate, you know, with the school heads and indicate, okay, I've been asked to give you 20 bags of maize and 10 bags of rice. But here is the case, the market price doesn't support what I'm supposed to supply. So I'm going to give you 5%. Now, the, here is a headmaster who sits down and for the whole of that week, he hasn't had any uh, rice to feed his students. He hasn't got any maize to feed his students. So some of them, because of this, and sometimes, you see, there's a saying in my language that the one who sees the fire on the mountain is the one who must go and fetch it. At a distance, it's very easy to say, that, oh, once the, the items were not, they didn't meet the specifications, don't receive. But here you are looking at your students in the face who have not fed themselves for about, for, for about in fact, in some instances, I can tell you in authority that there, are, there were instances and there are still instances where schools had to jump meals. What it means is that you will take breakfast, you will, you will jump lunch and take supper. Wow. If it's even for a day, if it's even for a day, and I can tell you, I won't mention names for now, 
that it has happened. This is just to tell you how has have been working under the circumstances in all these years just to keep things going. Mm. And I can tell you there are also instances. That, let me tell you, and I'll give you a very good example. And I, I'm always, I always want to cite, I'm more comfortable with citing my own examples, uh, which is very verifiable, and it is nothing new. I can tell you, for example, that as I speak, for example, that apart from maids, I don't have anything now, currently, today, as I said, hey. that will feed... Uh, that will feed. Yes, I'm telling you for and this, and I'm mentioning this. I'm not mentioning school. I am mentioning my school. Last week, we last week we received some food uh, stuff, and we got maize so much. We didn't receive rice. So I'm telling you that until yesterday, when I had to fall on my PTA to give me some rice, I just came from Accra Sunday. I was in Accra, and I was trying to find out what was happening. The students have been eating. They will eat TZ in the afternoon and eat TZ in the evening. That's and don't forget that they will take cocoa because. There is no Tom Brown. I don't have Tom Brown. I don't have Chokulu. They will take cocoa in wow. the in the in the morning. So it is maize, maize, maize soup. Now, one of the problems associated with this kind of thing is that number one, the menu. There's nothing like menu in most of our schools now, because at a point in time, it's true that you may have some particular kind of food. You may have maize at a time. At a time, at a point in time, you may have rice, plenty, but the maize is not there. So what it means is that you have to substitute all all maize related meals with the rice. By the time the rice is coming, by the time the maize is coming, the rice is gone. So this is one of the things that has that creates the, the, the imbalances, you know, in the system. Wow. So you you realize now, so with the emergency supply thing that I refer to, there was a time people were not supplying. The suppliers were not supplying. Now we wrote, and that was in 2022, we wrote to the minister at that time to address the issue. It went on up to 2023 as late as 2023 and this letter the other letter i'm holding is first june is dated first june 2023 mm. and we wrote again to the honorable minister through the director general citing one more issue that, that 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 cropped up that is the distribution of food at food centers which is still currently in place now, when this emergency supply thing was indicated, I mean, was uh, instituted, the understanding at that time that we got from the free HHS was that the emergency thing had come because the suppliers were not supplying. So they actually gave the mandate at that time for the regional free HHS coordinators to go to the market and buy the food items and supply to the schools directly until such a time that they are able to normalize and negotiate on the prices and normalize the issues. Mm. And that was the time these zonal centers were created. So it was supposed to be a temporal uh, measure to normalize the issue and then supply the food item. Because as for issue supply of food items, right from the time schools were even collecting their, 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 their own fees and up to the inception, the initial stages of the inception of the free HHS, once you are a supplier, you bring the food to the school. Mm. Mm. You cannot ask schools to go back to zonal centers and pick the food items because that comes at an extra cost. Mm for the mm. school, which it is not currently catered for by anybody. Mm. It's not currently catered for, and it's something again that we have so in mm. the June mm. letter, we mm. pointed mm. the attention of the minister. Subsequently, the explanation was given that it was a temporal measure. Okay. We pointed to the issue of uh, uh, so, so, under which. So, 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 I mean, I am, um, you mentioned that you have maize. Aside maize, what else do you have currently in your school? Are you, talking, are you talking about my school? Yes, yes. Aside maize. I, I, I want to do something. So aside the maize, what else do you oh. have? Yes. Um, for my school, if I want to talk of my school, I have, uh, uh, in fact, aside maize, uh, I have rice. Rice is zero. Um, gari is zero. Uh, uh, mackerel, I have mackerel. I have sardine, 22, uh, 14 cartons. I have milk. Interestingly, milk, I have only received milk after two years now. <laughs> so I was really excited getting milk, you know, after two years. And it was, uh -oh. for, for some schools, they had it. Some schools had it. But mm. generally, in the Northern Belt, in the Upper West in particular, mm. uh, milk was is something that has been very, very scarce uh, among us. Surprisingly, okay. some other uh, areas, they have those ones. And these are the disparities, okay. which are also part of the current, mm. uh, you know, challenges. Mm. I don't so, have oil. So, 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 I don't have Tom Brown. Okay. I don't have soya bean. Mm -hmm. I, don't have, I don't have soya bean. Which is very common here. I don't have granos. Granos is another scarce commodity, more scarce than cooking, as far as our supplies are concerned these days. It's something that we hardly, you know, uh, you know, uh, right. get. Mm. So these are the these are the these are some of the challenges. Mm. And as for the quality of the food, of course, if you have a situation like I have, 
you can you can nobody you don't need a soothsayer you know to tell you uh, the situation that uh, you know will be confronting us mm. right mm. in fact one of the things that we seek to understand as Charles is why there are disparities in the supply of food items you know as far as the foods are concerned okay. we seem not to understand whether the situation is coming from the because for now in other words for example mm. has, uh, you know has okay. operations for okay. more than a year now okay okay right but but it's, but it's, but, it's, but, but it's, i mean i mean the the supplies you have how long will it last you your school oh virtually if for example for example uh, if you take my school for example uh rice if you look at the the menu the menu that has been uh, no 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 uh, i mean i mean i mean i mean to ask you that what you have currently you don't have rice you have maize you have 14 cartons of sardine milk and i'm asking that with that what you have now how long yes. will it take your school to get finished if a miracle doesn't happen i think in the next uh, 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 what do you call it i can't even survive a week I only pray that it happens. Of course, okay. uh, we are in constant touch with our free HHS coordinators. Okay. He's aware of the current situation, mm. and uh, we know. We only pray. This cannot last. This certainly cannot last. Even the maze you are talking about, uh, I have a 41 bus. As at this, that was even as at this morning. I did distribution. Uh, I gave, I issued food items. And we take about, we consume about 14 bus of maize in a week. So if we subtract 14 from uh, 41, you can imagine what is happening okay. uh, now. Right. And that's the only one that I have. Okay. That is okay. maize I have because I don't have rice. In any case, I don't mm. want to limit it to uh, Jirapa Senior High. Yeah. But this is the general picture. Okay. Thank this you. This is general picture. And I actually referred you to the, 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 the history the, the, of the food oh, oh, Yeah, it I, get it. Been, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm grateful to you that you, you've been able, you've opened up like this to us. Uh, you know, it sets the ball for us to get to the next, uh, the next part. Let me bring in the pediatrician here. He spoke about something that he only has maize. So, I mean, for his school, you eat tozavi, tozavi. I mean, it's only maize food. But we, we've had people also talk about the fact that this is having an impact. And so, so you, you are there. Let me ask you, what, what sort of impact will this, the quality of the meals that is served students, will have on, on, on their health, for example? All right. Thank you. The students or adolescents, they are within the adolescent age group, mm -hmm. the teenagers they are growing, their bodies are developing, they are having good spits, their height, their weight, they are supposed to be having balanced meals. And these balanced meals will give them the energy to do work, the energy to study, the peace of mind to be able to study. Because you cannot study if you are hungry. You cannot study if you are disturbed about what you are going to eat as your next meal. So that's an issue there. And they need that right nutrition so that they can grow well. Again, for girl children, you know, every month the menstruation, so they may lose some blood. And therefore, they need their iron, the level of iron in their blood or their HBs to be high enough. And they will get these through the foods that they are eating at school. I mean, if they are in school, at school. So every meal that is offered to these children is an opportunity to, to, to put them up there, to be able to compete internationally in terms of their performance, in terms of their height, in terms of their growth. So every meal is important and they will only get that through a variety, not, not just like one type, but a variety. And then also the fruits and vegetables. I didn't hear any mention of the fruits and vegetables, but these are also important because they provide some fiber they will also give them some micronutrients that they need to grow and i didn't even hear much about the proteins the meat and all i just heard a bit of sardine yeah i don't know about eggs i don't know about beef i don't know about all those but these are important for them to be able to grow and as a nation we need to prioritize the well-being of our children because they are the ones who are going to grow to take up the responsibilities that have to be continued and so it's important that we invest in their nutrition now having said this the issue about where to get what from i know that the planting for foods and jobs is a program that is currently running if he is in the northern belt i'm struggling to understand why supply of granites is a problem. Is there a disconnect somewhere? Can we look at the systems? If you look at Ghana, we have 
vast land. We have a lot of young people who have energy and are looking for jobs. Is there a way that we can connect those dots, give them jobs to do, let them till the land, let us use some of these foods to feed the children that we have in schools, let us store some, let us save some, let us export some. So these are all possible. Um, I'm wondering why we still have some of these issues, but these are still possibilities. Then again, the issue of school farms may come in. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some schools who have farms, mm -hmm. and through that farming, they are able to get some food to feed. To feed. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> They're able to get some food to feed the students. So these are all opportunities. Maybe I'll come in again mm -hmm. later. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, thanks for that. But let me <coughs> a tell you, man, here, because those who cook for the student, I mean, are all under you. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, so, so what's the situation? You wanted to make some inputs there. Bring that up and then let's continue. Yeah, so um, um, my brother mentioned inflationary pressure. Mm. Um, I remember when the free SHS began, feeding per student per day was costed at 5.04 or so. 5.5 cities, 40, 40 per sweat. Per, per, per head. Per head. Mm. 2017. And then, as at that time, the agreement was that 30% of that would be released to the schools as perishable. And I want to state here that the perishable include frozen items that we spoke about. And at that time, because of the price at the time and the cost of frozen items and uh, other protein, um, it is possible to purchase them at that time. But over the period, the same amount is what is being remitted to schools, even if it comes at all. One CD, 56 per sweat. One CD, 56 per sweat. Per, sweat, per, per head, student per day. day. That is three meals. That is what is being used to prepare three meals for them. He mentioned inflationary pressures because as government is talking about inflationary pressures, it has not transmitted into the release of funds to school. Okay. So by now, they should have considered that there is inflation on that 1.56 that will result into increase in whatever we are going to buy. Mm. That is accounting for schools not able to buy protein in particular. Mm. And I know it is happening in so many institutions. Yeah, so if the money has improved, I believe schools will not start buying frozen items, egg and other things, mm. and then um, uh, fruit, so that the students can be able to get balanced okay. diet. Okay. So uh, that uh, is what... Uh, and uh, then, uh, um, uh, uh, let, let me just... This particular um, item that I mentioned, it, it takes care of gas. The one city... 56 pesos. It takes care of gas. Gas as well anything that has to do with kitchen okay firewood some people have to buy firewood because they don't have it within their compound premises replacement of kitchen equipment maintenance of kitchen equipment and we all know in ghana that the women can attest to that salt over the period has increased about 300 percent mm. so these are the pressures on the our metrons now in the various institutions so I don't want to talk about... But, but that money has not increased since 2017? No, it hasn't increased. Still the same? Yes, yeah, it's still the same. 54 pesos. Yes, yes, 56 pesos. It okay. hasn't increased. Wow. So that is the challenge that the schools have. Okay. Yes. Now, you heard the child secretary there mentioning the sort of food he, he has. Yes. How do your members manage with, with that to cook for, for the student? But just like he said, mm -hmm. whatever is available is what is prepared for them. I know there is a school because most of them inform us. You know, in Ghana, we don't cook jollof with uh, red oil, do we? No. But I was in the North Borga, one of the schools some time ago. They alerted me. They don't have cooking oil, so they have to use red oil to prepare jollof. So it means what is available is what is used to feed the students. So we have been saying that there should be parity in distribution of food items. We know that when you are selling beans to school, beans has to go with gari and oil. So let those three things go together. You don't send beans today and expect them to start preparing beans 
and then Gary another day, and then oil another day. No. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, let me bring in uh, my, my, uh, Madam Harriet here. Uh, I mean, we are all talking about the fact that there's, that there's no food, food is not moving and all of that. Your child has been there before, and I think she's still there. You're a mother, probably. What stories do you hear from your child in terms of feeding? Well, my ward is still in, in, in secondary school, mm. and the stories are many. Um, there are times that you do not have adequate to feed on. So you have to supplement that with what you have in your, in your box. If you do not have, then you go hungry. Um, there are periods in other schools where you go to the dining and you have hot water and soup served as lunch. Hot water? And soup. And soup. Which means that, come with your gari. <laughs> now, I'm not going to mention that. Mm. No, definitely I won't mention that. Yes, we will solve it. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. No, I'm not learning claims. No, 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 no. Hold no, 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 no. on. You have your time. I would, I would mention. Quasi, no, I won't mention that. We're well, having an event. Yes. Quasi, 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 you think that she will sit here and the case that is not happening in her school? I would she, mention she that. That is also no, for my own uh, credibility. Exactly. You know? And I'm saying, and I'm saying that the the it has happened in an, another school and I have heard that. Mm. You go with your gari mm. because the soup is there. Mm. So the hot water is there for you. Which means that there was no gari at that time. In my world school, they have given them gari with pepper as supper continuously, you know, for about, because that was what was available at that time. Mm. If they have gari for, uh, bags, bags of gari for a particular time without other foodstuffs, that is what will be saved. Like the child secretary just Exactly. Mm. And so it is not as if we are making up stories. These might be isolated cases, but they have happened. And that is why we are here today to talk about how we can um, solve those issues. Mm. You won't have bread. You have to buy your own bread for breakfast. There have been schools that, or let me say a school where you go for breakfast and you have to carry your sugar because there's no, there, there, there was no sugar at that point in time. And so if it's a week, you have to carry your sugar for that week. It's not as if the whole time you are carrying your own sugar. But this means that there are here is our point in time that particular supplies are not available and the children will have to supplement that. Which means that whatever you give them run out faster than you would probably have anticipated. And they will call home mm. and you have to restock. restock for them, you know. So these are um, happening. And the fact that it is inadequate, what is on the plate is not just enough for a growing boy or a growing girl. You know, when the term ended and my boy got home, I just shouted, hey, you have become flat. <laughs> <You know? laughs> because he has grown so lean, mm. and, 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 and the way he ate for the first week at home, you could just see that he wanted to kind of replenish whatever he was not getting. Mm. You know, but we understood all that. I have stayed in the boarding house for seven years, secondary education. So I understood that you wouldn't have it as you have it at home, but you shouldn't get to the extent where um, supplies have run out totally. In my seven years of education, it was only in my first year that we ran out of food and we were served rice water for supper. Okay. And the head teacher announced, the next morning, you are all going home because we have closed down the school. Until we receive supplies, supplies, you are not coming back. Out of the seven years, it was only once. And so it can happen again that we will never run out of, of stock or supplies if we plan well yeah. and we initiate implementation in a manner that ensures that at every point in time, we have adequate supplies that head teachers will not find themselves uh, in such problems and children will have the peace of mind to study. Because it is very difficult to study okay. when you are hungry. Okay.
Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, let me bring in Dr. Pake. Doc. Well, since mm. we are now speaking about the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. I think that uh, we need to sit upright. Uh, before Kofi left, and I think this is common knowledge, we all know that the biggest percentage of the funding of the Free Snail School policy goes to food. About 70% 70 70 of the funding goes to food, for obvious reason. In all of this, as we heard uh, Mr. Uh, 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 Barrow. Barrow, Barrow say, yeah. and the nutritionists indicate, pediatrists mm -hmm. indicate, and my sister here indicate. We are speaking about young adolescents, teenagers, and we know the biology of how it is important for them not to just have adequate food in terms of the portion, but a balanced diet for good reason. It affects their physical growth, their emotional growth, mm. and their psychological growth, almost everything. And so when young adolescents are not getting sufficient food and balanced diet. It is a problem. I also have a son who is in first year. He came home, and when I saw him, I mistook him for okay. his younger brother. He had lost weight. Look, ask parents. This, these are the realities, and we shouldn't beat about the bush. He is the second son. The first son, he is in uh, university first year. Mm. He also went through similar. But clearly, the conditions seem to have deteriorated mm. in terms of the quality of the food and the quantity of the food. And there's documented evidence to show, even if we can deny what I am saying because I'm a politician, parents would bear me out. This is why parents have had to develop all kinds of means and strategies. I know of parents who are paying women in the vicinity of the schools that their wards are attending to feed them just because they are not getting enough food mm. or the food they are getting is of a, a very poor quality. Okay. I know of parents who will prepare food that can last for two or three days and smuggle that food to the schools to okay. give to the wards. Mm. So we shouldn't beat about the bush. But the question is this. Mm. Why is it that we are spending the biggest chunk of the allocated resources on food, and yet the food arrangements continue to give us a problem? And I'll tell you why. Mm. We have advocated that we have to take a second look at the program. We have talked about a review, and that includes that. Why can't we revert to the old arrangement? where government would remit the feeding fee instead of the 30% for perishables, but the entire feeding oh. fee to the headmasters. Let them find their own Supply. suppliers. Let them sit down with their bezes, their matrons, the dining hall prefect, the dining hall master. They draw their menu, mm. and within okay. the catchment area, mm. Mm. they can find suppliers to supply them food. Sure. As they... Charles Secretary said, mm. how is it that a school in Jirapa, in the northern part of Ghana, where we grow granite, have. have a challenge getting granite? Mm. Do you want to know the answer? It's because Buffer Stock Food Company is in Accra, and they are giving contracts to people who do not know the geographic locations, of and the suppliers are supplying what they can get when they can get okay. without any systemic way mm. of ensuring that mm. there is a proper way okay. of doing things. Okay. And that is just one of the reasons why mm. we cannot continue with this firefighting. Okay. You cannot okay. run a program for almost eight years mm. and yet be adamant to a call, a clarion call for a review. Okay. Let's all sit around the mm. table, bring in the parents, bring in the teachers, bring in stakeholders. Let's draw jaw. Let's look at where so, the so program I'll, is doing I'll, I'll, well. I'll come to you for you to give me what you think the solutions should well, be. Well, very well, because, I'll, I'll, I mean, so, this so, is one so, of the solutions. So, yes, yes. So prepare. We can continue doing it the same way and okay. expect different answers. Okay, all right. It must change. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Kwesi? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it becomes uh, very difficult when anytime you're having this conversation. Mm. Uh, in a conversation when 
one party reserves the right to lay all claims and when even in a respectful and polite way you ask for details of the claim that has been laid even with the intent of intervening because whichever way uh, I mean the back still rests on you and you still have to take a decision mm. you you are seen as maybe defensive you are seen as intolerant and maybe even insensitive to the plight of children and sometimes the picture is made to look like uh, maybe for us, even in the Ministry of Education, we do not care about the plight of children. And I mean, if you want to even extend the argument, one may say that, why are we here? We are here because uh, a documentary was made. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Ministry also gave some responses. And maybe some way, somehow, to also validate the claims that we are making we, we, we have to make a case. But for us, within the Ministry of Education, that is not the priority. Our priority is to put out the facts and also make admissions when they are necessary. Of course, I listened to Charles President, a lot of the claims that he made, particularly if you look at, I mean, when he adduced evidence to support claims of past happenings, of course, I mean, right after the COVID, for instance, it is true that indeed you had suppliers being reluctant with the supplies. And that even occasioned this emergency supply because, mm -hmm. rightly so, due to the inflationary pressures, suppliers were unwilling to even supply food to the school. Because, for instance, if you supply food at A amount and you are even expecting profit margins of B amount, I mean, within the next two days, inflation goes high. So, certainly, Economically, it won't be sound to even distribute the foods to the schools. And that occasioned the Minister for Inter Inter Education to once again intervene and bring about this emergency response or the emergency supply. Because prior to that, when you supply, it takes an average of three months for buffer stock to do the necessary processes and payments. But as a way of uh, cushioning suppliers, we came out with the emergency response. So yes, I agree with Mr. Premos on that. But I mean, I'm sure that was in the past. Currently, he's also, I think he also yes, highlighted some challenges. Some challenges. Yes. First of all, let me make an admission that uh, uh, my, my, my superiors are watching, and of course, my good self too, even as I'm here, I'm sending reports to them. You see, we are not there as leadership because there are no challenges. No, that's not why we are here. We are there to provide intervention, and particularly in, in situations where there are anomalies or challenges, we do, we do intervene. So, I mean, I, I find it quite surprising in a way. But of course, first of all, the assurance surprising is that... Surprising that? No, I'm coming. First of all, the assurance is that we, we are going to intervene to his school and even the entire England that he's described. But you see, there are 18 By food when? items. By when? Uh, immediately. Immediately. It's, it's of immediate effect. But you see, there are 18 food items. You talk of maize, you talk of soya beans, some brown rice, gary beans, peanuts, flour, sugar, milk, hot chocolate, millet, tomato paste, Margarine, sardine, mackerel, palm oil, and vegetable. I mean, initially, uh, remember he said he only had meat, but I think later on when you probably said there were also some other food items. But of no, course, he gave a list of. Yep, no, but initially, uh, if you recall, he said he, he had only meat, mm -hmm. and then later on that he added some food items. But you see, you see, the head teachers are very hardworking, and I must commend them, including himself. What usually happens is that even they among themselves has a, a butter arrangement among themselves to the extent that when for instance, they realize that I have sugar, but in terms of stock, my, the, the stock is going low quickly. I pick sugar from the other school, and later on, maybe when I get my stock, I'm also able to, uh, 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 how do you call it, provide same to him. So even they have that internal arrangement among them. So, so for me, I, I will be very surprised when a claim is made that I have only one food. But of course, later on, he corrected that. There are some items, but not all. You see, no, significantly... No, if, if, you, if you listen to him, it wasn't as though he changed it that much that he said the only thing he has is maize. No, but later on he, he listed some food items. They fell on the PTA for some rice. But even as they speak currently, he, that, he doesn't no, have you rice. See, he only you has see, maize. You see, let me tell you something. You know, anyway, but, 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 but I, mean, I mean, you conclude. Let me, he's, he's with us. No, so I, let, me, let me conclude. Yeah, no, conclude let me conclude. I am now. saying that mm -hmm. in terms of the distribution... Mm -hmm. We have buffer stock in GCS. Of course, the arrangement is not as though food is supplied from Accra to schools probably within the districts. Mm. 
there are a lot of times there are regional distribution centers. A lot of even these suppliers are from the regions. So buffer stock has 18 food items. And out even beyond the 18 food items, you have what you call perishables. But that perishable is paid directly to the school. At least for purposes of education, it is not 1.56 cities as claimed. It's rather seven cities per, 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 per person in terms of burden. What, go, what goes to the, yes. to, to the school? No, 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 in terms of, no, initially he said 1.56 and out of that 30% goes to. No, the, no, 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 no. He says out of the amount, 30%, which is 1.56, goes to the school. The amount you, this is 30% of the cost at the okay, time. Okay, so, yes. so, so it's good that I brought it up so that at least we have that clarity for avoidance of doubt. Okay, but I understand. So him. it is seven, I mean, um, um, is, uh, uh, whichever way, it's okay. good that we brought it up. Mm -hmm. It's seven CDs per person for boarding students okay. and three CDs per, per person in terms of a day yeah. students. Okay. Uh, but of course, you, so, you so are also unable to take it on a simplistic value mm -hmm. pair because, for instance, in my own house, mm -hmm. if I take 20 CDs and say, for instance, I'm buying uh, flour, corn flour and cassava flour, I should be able to prepare banku. But if I'm giving each person, for instance, that 20 CDs, it may not be that significant. So the nominal figure... Uh, if you want to take it at that value, it may be quite uh, uh, misleading. But I, I just wanted to correct that, okay. uh, that amount. Mm. But beyond that, 30% mm. of the seven okay. CDs is allocated okay. for the All right. which as of now, mm. there is prompt and up to date. I'm, no, I'm, it, it looks like when I'm talking, I... I, oh, I no, I'm, no, no, no. I give you a lot of time. No, no, no. no, 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 no. He did the same to me. So. Oh. <laughs> he, he did you you go ahead and, and wrap for me. Look, I am, I'm saying that 30% uh, of the seven CDs is allocated for perishables. The last time I checked, mm. the only allocation in terms of payment that is supposed to go is that of mm -hmm. February. This year? Yeah, February. That and of course, gone. March has not ended, yes. Mm. Because we are up to date up till January. Mm. So the perishables, of course, are used for the purchase of eggs, the fish, the meat, and what have you. So it is, the not, gas supply. Yeah, it is not the case. It is, I need to confirm that. I need to confirm that with free But what I know is that perishables, so far as I'm concerned, is for the purchase of meat, eggs, mm. fish, chicken, and I mean, those perishable items. Okay. I'm not sure gas is a perishable food item. maintenance of the well. chick, uh, uh, so, kitchen no, is I, not I, No, that's what I'm saying. That I, need to, I need to get okay. a verification mm. from okay. free I'm not sure All gas right. is perishable. All right, I hear. And that has been paid. So if, mm. if the okay. impression is as though... But you see, I'm, I'm London. I'm London. La land for me. In London, I am saying mm. that... The, the conversation should not be as though it's a conversation to for probably, I mean, online problems. Mm. We as a Ministry of Education even acknowledge mm. these positive feedbacks. But assurance is that where there are challenges, we are ready to mm. uh, engage all stakeholders and resolve okay. them. That assurance is there. All right then. So for the record, my production team that is watching the Times, they're working for nine minutes. That's what they tell me. Uh, let me bring in <laughs> Primo here. Primo, so your reaction to what uh, Kwezi Kwati is saying? You see, he's giving assurance yes, that uh, immediately they are going to come to your aid. Yes, uh, I'm happy. Uh, and that is a privilege of having platforms like this. But mm. like I indicated, I don't want it to be limited to Jeffrey Senior High. I'm mm. comfortably setting that, citing that one as an example because mm. I have the figures uh, readily uh, you know, available. Okay. But just to indicate that I did not indicate that I had other food items. If you listen to me correctly, I particularly cited corn because corn is currently the only food item now in terms of the, I don't know, uh, how do I put it? I don't know what kind of, the, maybe the, 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 the nutritionist will help me. Mm. Because I don't have accompaniment. Uh, his network again. Anyway, um, let, let's open up the discussion. I'll, I'll come to my panel for, the, for them to, I mean, two minutes each for them to give me solutions. But before I come to you, let me expand and bring in other Ghanaians as well other people who are watching and listening, to join the discussion as we have it here. 0302-21-1691. 0302-21-1691 or 0302-21-1692. Call us and let's have uh, your viewpoint here on, on the uh, Free SHS Promise, what you think must be the solution to the challenges that confront the implementation of this, uh, you know, as people put it, wonderful policy. We're looking for what needs to be done uh, for us to ensure that we get it right. 0302 211691. 0302 21 1691 or 0302 21 1692.
uh, uh, as we wait for your course, let, let me go to Dr. Park here and, and start the, the whole solutions discussion. Dr. Park, what must be done? Well, we, we have said that given how long the program has been I'm giving you two minutes. in implementation <laughs> and given how persistent the challenges have been, mm. the current firefighting approach is not the best. Mm. And that is why we join the rest of stakeholders in calling for mm. a review. Okay, because no, beg, the issues uh, are uh, interconnected. Pa 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 pardon me, uh, someone has joined, but you are here with me, so let me let me let me get him. Sicho, calling us from Accra. Sicho, how are you? How are you? Yes, Let's yes, hear from you. you. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yes, I'm watching the program of this thing about the solution you are talking about. Yes, it's a very good policy, but my submission is at times we made the parents responsible. If government would take tuition fee and allow the parents to pay for their feeding, it will help. Okay, but okay. put you all the blame for this purchasing for a child is too small. And we know people mm -hmm. that in household is a child who a lot of money. Okay. okay. So that's the best meeting. At okay, least okay. we made the parents a little bit responsible. The government all right, is so so the replacement and all those things. Okay, so, 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 so. That's Thank you very time. much. Now, um, if you call us, kindly make it brief. 30 seconds, you, make, you give, give us your solution. solution. And then someone can also have the chance to join in. Eugen is joining us from Tema. Eugen, let's hear you. So we have to look at it holistically. Hello, Eugen. Yes. Hello, Eugen, joining us from Tema. If you can hear me kindly, let's have your viewpoint on the solutions bit. Very interesting discussion. I believe strongly that the issue about CSHS has not been misunderstood seriously by a lot of people. Okay. The fact is that a lot of people would have been out of, out of school by for this program, which we all be, agree. Okay. Okay. Now, the program of, problem of feeding has to be tackled. Uh, Eugene's line is not stable for me. We have Kletos joining us from Kumasi. Kletos, uh, uh, Kletus, good evening to you. Good evening. Yes, let's hear you, sir. So my, my, my point is, all the issues that have been raised, they are solvable issues. And I believe about the of your program, uh, you should have dedicated an hour for solutions. And the time allocated for solutions is just uh, some 20 minutes. I believe that they are all problems that can be solved. And that it should not be made as if the entire quality is something that is bad, but then we must put the problems are and we solve them. Thank you. Okay, okay. Kletus, Kletus. Yes. Okay. Uh, he joined us from Kumasi. You can also join us, um, 0302-21-1691. Kwame Ansa from Kumasi. Kwame Ansa, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Let's hear your viewpoint. Thank you very much. Good evening, mm -hmm. sir. Yes, please. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we need to review the pre in high school policy. Mm. It's a very good policy, but we need to review it. Let parents help. Let parents assist. Okay. okay. Like Charles is saying, let us revert to the whole system. The suppliers and the headmasters should deal directly. Okay. okay. Well, I, mean, well, I, mean, uh, I think your point is well made. Point. If you call us, kindly listen to yourself on the phone, not on the television, so that we, we can have your thought uh, uh, quite smoothly. Um, you can call us also uh, for us to pick your viewpoint. Uh, the line is 0302 161932. Do, do call us uh, for us to have your viewpoint. Richard is joining us, and the numbers are on your screen, so you can pick it and call us. Richard is calling us from Insawam. Richard, good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Let's hear your solutions. Okay. Please, I'd like to speak to you. Uh, okay. Uh, try, I mean, once you are through, speak it out. Yeah, try. but uh, a good policy. Free mm. SHS, a good policy. Yeah, but, uh, a good policy. Namihu Mebano. I have a say, I'm a prayer activity. Be now, what's so far? Well, um, Uncle Richard, Uncle Richard is listening to us. But if you call us, 
Can you listen to yourself on the telephone, not on the TV, so we can have a smooth conversation here? Dr. Kwesiata is also joining us. Doc, I'm grateful for joining. Uh, let's hear your solutions. Um, thank you. The name is Kofi Aka. Dr. Kofi Aka. Um, I, my solution is this. Make all students, these students, if you want your child to be in the boarding house, you pay for it. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah, so that's okay. my solution. Okay. Thanks for that proposal. Uh, Ima is also joining us from Achimota. Hi, good evening. Thanks for joining. Let's hear your solution. Yes, good evening, Bruce. Um, yeah, Bruce, um, good evening. Um, I'm enjoying the program. And then I think that the is very good policy. As we are all saying, um, I realize that Well, the well, lines, the lines uh, uh, his line is not helping. Uh, if you call us, kindly listen to yourself on the telephone, not on the television. Uh, Ebenezer is joining us from Takrade. Eben, thanks for calling. Let's hear your solutions. Hello. Hi, Eben. Hi, Eben. Let's, Let's hear your proposals. Your proposal. Yeah, my proposal is politicians just to take off their hands from education and hand over to the educationalists to manage the education system for us. They are doing too much politics of education, and they are destroying education. In fact, when you come to the class, even the teachers in the classroom, they are creating problems for us with these feeding issues. You go to class, the students will be telling you, he's had this complaint of headache. Mm -hmm. Mother is all about because he has not eaten. So the children are really suffering. And the child should stop pretending that they are doing the right thing. They are not doing okay, the right okay. thing. They are starving the children. Mm. And you know, Okay. okay. Hey, ben, I'm, 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 I'm grateful to you for joining us here. Uh, let's pick one, one final one. Afat is joining us from Tamale. Afat, thanks for joining. Let's hear your viewpoint, sir. Hello. Hello, Afat. We can hear you. Yeah. Listen, to, listen to yourself I'm on the good. telephone and, and let's have your point. Tamale. Okay. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to solve problems concerning education. Uh huh. So I want to advise that policy should be taken out of uh, issue. Okay. Our problem is the political issues. At the end of the day, you all want to achieve something mm. better for the education or for the students. So okay. what I'm saying is that they should come to dialogue, whether opposition or ruling government, mm. so that we can have a, a final solution. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to you for uh, your, your, your thoughts there. But we're not done with you. All of, those, uh, all of you who are commenting on social media will, and then on WhatsApp will bring all of that to you uh, after our break. But just before, let me go back to, uh, I mean, Primus. Uh, Primus, you are saying something when you're lying uh, tripped there. Uh, quite briefly yeah. so that we can take our break. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I was just saying that I was just trying to correct an impression mm. that uh, as I indicated that I didn't have food items, and later on I reversed. It's, mm. That's not a, that's not the issue. Mm. Maybe the line that was not clear that it was. I was just indicating that apart from maize, which I can use to cook lunch and supper now, mm. I do not have any other food items. Mm. I can't talk of rice. I can't talk of yam. I can't talk of millet. I don't have any. So what it means is that I use maize for breakfast, maize something maize for lunch, and mm. something maize for supper. Mm. As mm. for the other things I mentioned, sardine, milk, mackerel. Those are things that are used for soup, so for soup anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation I'm talking about. Then quickly, no, the next one, the there, there is something yes. about this meat issue that we are mentioning. Can you help with the list of the issue yes. about The issue yes. about frozen meat, there's frozen a history meat. behind it. Mm -hmm. Now, at the inception of the free senior high school, this was uh, uh, items that were supposed to be bought by the school. What happened in 2017, 2018 was that Actually, these items were given to suppliers. So you have a situation where you sit in the school and the supplier actually brings you fish, mm. brings you meat. Mm. Now, by the time he arrives, you have other items which are in the fridge already. You cannot store them. So that time, Charles made a passionate appeal to the ministry that, no, just give us that. Why do you supply fresh meat and fresh fish to schools? Because even in the cost of transportation, anything can happen. 
give that component of the money to the school so that if my metro is to cook meat say, on Thursday, I give that money to her to go and buy meat. Okay. So okay. there's no sense in what they mm. were doing. Mm. And actually, we drew the direct supply of meat and okay. fish, frozen mm. items to the schools. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, that component of the fee had never, 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 ever been put back on our fee structure. Well, I mean, I'm talking about the component that comes to the school. It has not been done. So if we see schools that are still squeezing to buy meat and fish, <laughs> it's from... It's from a, a managed source. Mm. Either it's coming from an additional source or it's coming mm. from just the managerial skills of that particular headmaster or headmistress. Okay. So that is one thing I also want to put on record. Okay. But I also want to quickly, which is mm. the most important one, that is the issue of, uh, Mr. Kwati mentioned the issue of areas. In fact, I've had uh, a lot of feedback on these issues attributable to my senior, my brother uh, Kwati. It is, it is not totally accurate okay. that all areas are cleared in terms of perishables. It is not totally accurate. Okay. It I, is true that, let, and let me, let me okay. quickly go on. Uh, uh, pr pr Primus, I'm grateful to you, but uh, I would have to take a break here. So let's go All for right. a break. When we come back, we take solutions from our guest, and they will bring you social okay. media as well. Stay with us. Well, so welcome back to the Joy News National Dialogue, the free SHS promise. Uh, my colleague Shola Adeyomi joins us now with uh, your views from social media. Shola. Thank you, Braze. Just as this conversation, we are having it here. People are having it on social media. And I mean, social media is talking. So we are going to look at X. We are going to X, WhatsApp, Instagram, everywhere anyone is talking, we are going to talk. So we are going first on Facebook. Let's see what they are saying. Now, Paul Nah says, Ekufuado's free SHS was problematic because of his want to win power to become president of Desperate. Now, Paka S says, transportation is not the major issue. The long list of items on the prospectus, many of them are just extorting from parents. Papa Peterson says, hey, I some more. So he should provide free cars too, or what? <laughs> Isaac B says, same people asking government to allow parents to pay are also complaining of transportation cost. What sort of people are we, crap? Abu Kasim says, so they want free transportation too, right? Ejeni Wating Apia also says, only transportation, say on feeding and vacation classes. Isaac was, you know, replying to that and he says, you mean government should also pay for vacation classes too, which has always been a choice since independence. Let's go on WhatsApp because obviously people are also talking on WhatsApp. Now, uh, Prof from Tema says, please, the problem is not just food. Last year, first year students spent five months to finish the academic year. Same students are in second year now, and per the calendar, they will spend six months to complete the entire academic year. The system needs total overhaul. Good evening. I can't get my head around this free education in Ghana. Why does a country like Ghana, going around the world with beginning ball, offer a free boarding education? I remember a BBC journalist asking the president then, a candidate, how he was going to fund this. Please, let parents pay for boarding whilst the day is free. Thanks. Nana from Spintex Road is the one saying that. There used to be government, CMB, banks, and other scholarships for the poor and needy previously. Where are these funds? So, yes, as I said, social media really is talking. And uh, let's get more of the comments from uh, WhatsApp. Honestly, the PRO of the Education Ministry is even scared of losing his job. Hence, he cannot accept and speak to the fact that there are intimidations. A.K. Langla is the one saying that. Please, Mr. Quantin, you mentioned three key points by the ministry. Why then should computing be an option when you are producing graduates who are digital illiterate? More of this. Uh, good evening, host. The GES PRO should not throw dust into the eyes of anyone on the show. Some heads of schools were victimized. Free SHS, sorry, is a good educational policy implemented poorly. Students have to feed at times on one particularly food for over two months. So still on Facebook, as I said earlier, people are sharing their problems and, you know, they're seeking solutions. Let's take a few more from WhatsApp and then we'll come back to Facebook. You'll always be paysitters in all humility. Can you ask Dr. Apak to mention at least five positives about the free SHS program? Um, yes, still on WhatsApp. Samed Adam says, Mushi Francis, how are you 
going to do that when the student decides what to do in school. And so yes, these are the comments that people are sharing on social media. Great. Chola, I do there. Well, uh, back to my panel. Let me take a minute each. Give me your solutions. And then we'll move on uh, coming with our communicate. Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Park. Well, my take is that the problems are multiple. Mm. And to have a solution that is going to be holistic will require a stakeholders forum to throw up ideas on how we can reform it. And that is why we are calling for a review. Okay. Mm. So the solutions ought to come out <clears throat> of the review. Okay. All right. So that's uh, from Dr. Park. Mr. Uh, Kojoja, your, your solution. Yeah, so my first solution I want to mention is that uh, I've listened to some of the comments raised by people. I want to modernize the uh, day issue by feeding every student one hot meal so that the parents can take care of two other meals, breakfast and supper. For the day student? No, everybody. Everybody, everybody should be fed once. Once, okay. Only once, so that... Parents can take care of breakfast and supper. Okay. We know there are some parents who cannot do that. That is where district assemblies must come in to help us identify very poor ones so that they can be fed well. Okay. Yes. Interesting. All right. So that's his proposal there. Yes. Right. I have two. One, I think that there should be uniformity in the distribution of food such that um, you don't have to mention the name of a school for government to go and address that. Mm. There might be 100 or more schools who are facing that same challenge at the same time. And so if supplies are uniform, every school will have food same time, they will run out, we will restock at the same time. Two, parents at this point in time should be allowed to contribute. Okay. PTAs are already being levied to support free ESA in some schools when the stocks run out. Okay. So 50 CDs a term, 20 CDs a term, some calculation should go into this. It shouldn't be a huge amount. And that will go a long way to support what government is supplying. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Mantevia Boy. I think that a lot has been said already. This is a national issue. Let's all put on our Ghana caps and remove political lenses, political attires, remove politics, and engage to find the solutions to this. Again, we should try and prioritize the well-being of these adolescents or these students who are in school and prioritize the quality of whatever service or whatever provisions that we are making for them. Let's look at how we can improve the quality as well, because when it comes to nutrition the quantity alone is never enough the quality matters okay all right thank you so much where's it going yeah i mean <laughs> ultimately uh leadership has to still step in like i indicated we are running a system that is fraught with uh, a lot of human interface and as soon as there is a human interface you are not able to get all your desired outcomes but platforms like this, feedbacks like your own, also help us to improve what we are already doing. So yes, good feedback for us. We, we are still taking everything we've discussed here into consideration. But I have a good news for Mr. Uh, Promus okay. before I leave. Uh, the, 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 today we notified him that we've already distributed rice to his area. So you, you should go and pick it so that coupled with the other items he listed, he can have good meals for his people. So you have notified him that you've sent rice. This yes. is As I speak with you. We want a holistic solution. <laughs> Why <Five items. laughs> about the money? You, are, you, are, you, are, you allow me to flow. <laughs> no, no, this, is, this, is, this is it. You, something comes up yeah. in school so, A, then you so, go. So like they say, I mean, then you go. are we supplying food? We need a holistic high school No, you see, solution. understand that if we look at the distribution uh, uh, arrangement, there are different suppliers supplying different food items. Mm. There are even instances and situations where you supply foods to schools and the schools may not even have adequate storage. So, like I indicated, human interface is in. But it cannot be a case that a school does not have all food items. Usually you may have about school missing one, two, three food items, but that's why sometimes you may have alteration within the 
the menu, standardized menu, as he, he rightly indicated. Mm. But when, it, when, when the school says they do not have supplies, mm. it is not within the context like all the 18 food items, even exclusive to the perishables are not there at all. Mm. It, it may be a case that one or two food items, largely, especially a lot of them are also occasioned by during the lean seasons. You may not, for instance, in Accra here, during the lean season, you may not get, uh, how do you call it, peanuts. So in, in such instances, they substitute to another food until they get a peanut. But in this case, he says he doesn't have rice. And you know what? A lot of the Ghana producers of, uh, I mean, producers of Ghana rice, they have a lot of rice. But because of the payment by buffer stock, they are afraid to sell to them. So maybe it's one of the areas that you could, you could look at. If you look at payment... No, when, 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 you, when, when is rice finished? Because you see... No, 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 no. but, but, but Chrissy, if mm -hmm. you look at payment system very well, the producers of Ghana rice can supply you a lot of rice. And, and take, it, take it from me, as, as someone who is in that value chain, we can supply you. I'm a farmer but myself. Of, ah, but because of payment, we are not supplying buffer stock. That's something we need no, to the, discuss. The payment anyway. has always been a, a, a standard Address arrangement. And, and, uh, no, and at every point, available for our You children. see, in government, in government procurement, mm. at every point, you do the way before you come for your money. Okay. So right. it is not as though government pays cash down before they send. Mm. So that's why, I mean, you may get suppliers who are willing and suppliers who, are, who may also not necessarily be interested. Because ultimately, you still have to distribute the food for the, the duration. duration that's, that's of course. I mean, I mean exactly. it's a good, it's a good uh, feedback. Let, 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 me, let me go to Primus. Primus, you, you also give us a, your, your proposal in terms of how you think we can better the system. My, my, my proposal is, first of all, um, to acknowledge the good news from uh, my brother Kwating. Mm. And but just to say that I hope it is for everybody, it's not for Jefferson. Otherwise, Charles members will sack me after this meeting I'm sorry, for advocating for my school. But I said that you're example you're sorry, just you're because sorry. that's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's, it goes away. But a, a very quick one before I approve some solutions that I was just drawing the attention uh, of the panelists to the fact that there are still some areas. It is not true that uh, the, the all areas, uh, especially in terms of perishables and recurrent, has been given to the school. That is not the, that is not very accurate. A, a quick one: the day schools in particular. If you take the day schools, the day schools they also have double track and single track. In fact, eighteen uh, eighteen of the day schools are actually double track uh, day schools. Currently, the form ones, of course, they just reported in December. They have not received any payment. The form twos. They only receive payment for the 2023 first semester. Second semester for 2023 recurrent up to date has not been paid. Now for the form trace, I'm talking about the form trace who had left. The form trace who have left, the free education owes them second semester. They also owe them second semester of 2023. This is for the double track uh, day schools. For the double track single uh, uh, day, uh, day schools, the single track day schools. In fact, all current, all recurrent have been paid uh, up to 2023. As for that one, that respect, they have been paid. In fact, but some complain that they are not received fully. But I think those are things that we need to go in and combat. Generally, all recurrent for 2023 have been paid to day school single track. But no recurrent has been paid for 2024. And uh, this Th thank is you, day school situation is mm. much Yes. Thank you, Primus. I'm, I'm grateful to you for sharing with us your thoughts on, on how this can be done. But um, uh, as we've all been talking, we've been putting together what we think government should look at uh, in making this better. Let, let's share with you some of the things that you've been sharing with us here and, and what we've been able to, to put together as a team. We're saying that the National Dialogue, the Free SHS Promise, key highlight of this conversation has been that there are a lot of schools beset with infrastructure, infrastructural challenges Food is a major challenge. Now, it would be dishonest for anyone to say feeding isn't a challenge. That's one thing that has come. Now, all the suppliers under the buffer stock were refusing to supply. And also, we've heard here that suppliers at some point were negotiating with headmasters to undersupply them. Now, the overly political nature of the program makes it difficult for government to admit the challenge. Monies are not being released for sanitation purposes. And also, government pays one city 54 uh, uh, city, uh, pesos for sanitation and maintenance purposes. And schools are allocated one city 56 pesos to feed one student per meal. Uh, that is what is there. Now, many headmasters have been intimidated over comment made under the free SHS policy. We have also heard here that head teachers are being victimized and the silence is real. 
Now, we've also heard that some parents are compelled to smuggle food to senior high schools to feed their children. It is not accurate that all areas have been cleared. You know, uh, these are the points that we've been uh, sharing here. Now, supplies should come from catchment areas. Government, and these are the recommendations that have been given, that government must be, uh, uh, I mean, these are recommendations uh, that uh, have been uh, shared here. Now, uh, supplies should come from catchment areas. Government must be deliberating, prioritizing the feeding of the children. Schools must capitalize on the school's farm. So schools must have school farms to feed uh, their, their children. Government should not be adamant to review after uh, eight years of running uh, program. So, uh, I mean, that is the, the recommend. These are the recommendations here, and, and I'm sure uh, that uh, you know, uh, government. If government can pick this, it would all help us. This has been the Joy News National Dialogue, the Free SHS Policy. Grateful to you for joining us wherever you join us from. Uh, I mean, many thanks to my panelists. Uh, we've had uh, Kwesi Kwating, PR for Education Ministry. Clement Park Doc is a Deputy Ranking Member, Parliamentary Committee on Education. Um, we got here Ambrose Kwajoja, National Chairman Tewu. Uh, we've also had in studio uh, Dr. Hilda Mantibia Boy, President of Pediatric Society of Ghana. Thank you for coming. Uh, we've also had um, Harriet Norma, Senior Programs Officer of St. Ghana. Earlier, we were joined by Kofi Asari, Executive Secretary of Africa Education Watch. And also on Zoom, we've had Primus Barrow, National Secretary of CHAS. Well, uh, thanks to all of you for joining us here, and I hope that the government will take this. Well, uh, an edition, edition of uh, the Joy News National Dialogue will come your way soon. On behalf of the entire C uh, team, I say thank you for joining us here. Up next here on the Journey's channel is the PM Express Business Edition with George Uyafe. Thank you so much. We'll meet again some other time. Good evening.